Hey guys welcome to my channel today we are going to be going to what if Deku died and went to Waco Mundo as a hollow. He gains Las Lobos as Antakudo movie make sure to like and subscribe it helps and it means the world to me also join the discord. If you also want I started a Patreon membership so $1 a month you get early access that is a Patreon link in the description disclaimer. There may be mature content and maybe 18 plus content, and I don't own this story with that stuff out of the way let's begin greetings readers. Here we go my dudes, Izuku with Los Lobos. I'm thinking of just having him use a normal Zantakudo, rather than someone like Lilinette though, just cause Lilinette's main point was her dynamic with Sterk's lazy attitude, and while Izuku is still gonna be a little lazy, he isn't going to be as lazy as Sterk. Like Blood and Rage and Vigilant Plume the ship for this story is undecided as of right now, so if you guys wanna let me know that would be great. Without further ado let's get into it. Izuku was always a lonely kid. Being part of a quickless minority tended to do that to you. It turns your best friend into your bully and turns your dreams of heroism into a bad joke. A different version of Izuku may have persisted with his dream and continued to try and be a hero despite his handicap. This Izuku however, just stopped caring. He stopped caring about being a hero. He stopped caring about his peers who would join in bullying him even if he tried to defend them from being bullied themselves. He stopped caring about justice and the glamorous life associated with his old dream. His new dream was to just live life day by day. He no longer had any interest in heroes or villains. His only interest was himself. He wanted a job that could feed him and house him regardless of what it was. He wanted to sleep his free time away without dealing with the complexities of other human beings. Izuku's obsession with solitude worried his mother from the start. Surprisingly enough after a couple of years even Kasuki began to worry for the quirkless boy. Kasuki tried to reconnect with his friend turned victim after the boy simply stopped trying to stop his bullying and even stopped interacting with him in general. Each time he tried Izuku would always brush him off and either do his schoolwork or nap. One day however everyone was worried for the boy. It was long after Izuku should have been home yet he was nowhere to be found. Inko, Misuki, Misaru, and Kasuki all ran around looking for the boy. Inko called the police before beginning a search of her own which the Bakugo family joined in on. They searched all over, however no one was prepared for what Katsuki found behind the skull. He saw Izuku's severed leg. The red boots were like a name tag for the boy. They also found what everyone assumed was one of his arms and a piece of his scalp. Katsuki broke down, as did everyone else as they arrived. A funeral was held a few weeks later. Izuku Midoriya was dead, killed by some unknown creature. Flashback to Izuku's demise. The boy was out at the back of the school preparing to take a nap. His mom wouldn't mind too much, and if she did he could say he was helping a teacher or something like that. He didn't really care if he was being honest. What was she going to do? Ground him from sleeping. Right before he lay down however his right arm disappeared. It looked like it was bitten off, but there was nothing there, all he had heard was a buzz of static. As the blood leaked out of his body and he came closer to death the boy saw the hollow that took his arm. He knew he couldn't escape no matter how hard he tried and resigned himself to his fate. Flashback end. The next day in the hollow ward of Waco Mundo, a green wolf hollow appeared. Several older hollows tried to feast on it only for it to kill them in retaliation. This process continued on for weeks before he became part of the hulking mass of despair that was one of the Jillians. However this Jillian was different. Rather than the black robes and generic mask, this one had green robes and a more wolf-like mask. This green Jillian and several others followed in a judges that looked like a hedgehog. Eventually this posse of hollows was attacked by a group of the judges lead by a giant hollow. Several of the Jillians were slaughtered, but the Hedgehog and the Jillian called Green both put up a really good fight, taking out most of the giant's posse. You damn insects. How dare you refuse to be eaten by the great Yami Largo. No one wants to die fattest. It's called survival instincts. Green hit that prick with the strongest zero you've got. Green could only roar in response before charging up a blue-green zero that fired off rapidly. These took the giant out of commission, but not before a couple balls fatally wounded the Hedgehog at judges. Green. Cough cough Green come here. The only way you're gonna survive is if you eat me. That Sierra was crazy you've definitely got some power. You're one of them I can tell. You're one of the hollows destined to become a Vasto Lord. So eat me and continue to grow stronger. Green could only roar as he consumed his leader and the other remaining hollows including Yami. Three weeks of consuming later and he became a large wolf like a judges. So this is the judges stage. It's not too bad, but it seems like a pain to deal with. As the new judges said those words he was ambushed by another group of hollows. This group contained a centipede, a scorpion, a spider, a crab, and a beetle. All of them were judges from the looks of it. However they were all much weaker than Green was. You're all bothersome. Go away. Green stated simply. That will not do your far too much of a snack to leave unattended. The crab stated. His compatriots all agreed. What a pain. Green said before using Sunido and devouring the spider and the beetle. The centipede and scorpion charged up Ciro's in retaliation, while the crab fired several balls. 
Green used Sunido to dodge all the attacks with ease and devoured the remaining judges. This pattern continued for the next month and a half. A pack would surround Green, he would tell them to leave, they would attack, and he would kill them. One day after he took out the leader of a particularly big posse, Green evolved yet again. He became a Vastal Lord that looked very similar to a werewolf of legend. As his transformation completed all of the other hollows around him disintegrated from the sheer power of his Riatsu. This would occur every time a hollow got too close to him. As a result every hollow eventually learned to stay away from him, or they died trying to get to him. He made his fair share of trips to the world of the living in the 10 months he had been a hollow. Most of these trips were made as a Julian, but he made a couple trips as an Ajuchus. He decided to see the world of the living as a Vasto Lord, primarily out of boredom. As he left the Garganta he saw several humans interact with one another in several different ways. He saw families, friends, and complete strangers interact with one another in their own ways. He was mildly irritated that he couldn't relate to such a thing as everything that got too close to him died. He split his time in half after that. Half of the time was him walking through or napping in Waco Mundo. The other half was spent observing human connections. Over the next several years he began to regain memories of his humanity. Not much, but things like his name, appearance and attitude. One day his desire to end his solitude rose so much that his mask cracked and shattered. Green regained his form as Izuku Midoriya, with only the jaw-shaped mask fragment around his neck, being the only indicator of his rancor nature. He saw a sword next to him and instantly recognized it as his own. Boss Lobasa. Need I guess. He went to the world of the living and got some clothes he thought were comfortable. He dressed in a green long-sleeved shirt under a black and white jacket, with black pants and white shoes. Once he had clothes he started taking walks around the world of the living. He got a couple questions about the sword, but he brushed it off as having a broken lock and not wanting to leave a family heirloom behind. One day on one of his walks he ran into someone from his past that he didn't remember. Aizuku, how are you here? You died ten years ago, said a blonde boy with red eyes. Ah you must have known me from my previous life. Sorry, but I don't really remember much of it other than my name. The green haired ranker deadpanned. T that doesn't matter. And Inko will be so overjoyed that you're back. Let's go see your mom dude. We'll tell you everything about your life before. Sure why not. I don't really care too much about my past honestly, but I don't have anything better to do. He began walking with the boy, his name he learned was Katsuki, although he supposedly used to call him Kakin, and was mostly filled in on the social aspects of the world of the living, like heroes and villains, how killing was frowned upon here, unlike in Waco Mundo among other things. Eventually they reached what was apparently Izuku's old apartment that his supposed mom still lived in. And Inko it's me Katsuki. I have a guest I think you'll wanna see. Akatsuki how good to see you. Is this guest the woman stopped as she stared at Izuku, who had a deadpan look on his face. She immediately hugged him tight and cried while he just stood there his indifferent look not leaving his face for a second. Kasuki had to keep getting her water so she didn't get dehydrated. Misuki and Misaru were called over, and they gave him similar treatment. Eventually the question of how he was alive came into play, and Izuku explained what he could. Once he finished Kasuki gave a rundown to make sure he understood things correctly. So let me get this straight. You were killed by this weird monster called a hollow. After you died you became a hollow and eventually fused with a bunch of other hollows, and became what's called a Jillian, which is like a giant thing that's stupid and only really follows orders. After that you evolved again and became another level of hollow called an Ajuchus. Then after that you eventually evolved again to a state only a select few of these monsters can achieve called Vasto Lord, but as a result your Riatsu or whatever killed everyone who got too close. Then after being lonely for years your mask cracked leaving only that part around your neck, which caused you to evolve again, and you began walking around because you were bored and lonely. Did I get all of that right? Yep. The green haired Aranker answered. So despite being quirkless as a human you have powers now that you're an Aranker? Misuki asked. Yep. Can we see them? Katsuki. Don't be rude. What? I'm curious about these powers of his. If you can find me a place to demonstrate without too much trouble it should be fine. They walked to Dagaba Beach where Izuku demonstrated his Sunido, which everyone found cool. He had Kasuki use his cork on him to demonstrate his hero, which surprised everyone after he came out unscathed. The most shocking reveal however was the raw power behind the boy's hero. Little did the group know, they had spectators. I am here. Well your cork is impressive my boy cork use in public is forbidden, so I will have to ask you to stop. All Might sat with a blonde boy standing beside him. While everyone else was freaking out about All Might's presence Izuku made his response. I don't have a quirk. But you clearly fired a large energy beam just now. It isn't a quirk. Then what is it? Izuku then explained the situation to All Might, and the young man whose name was Mirio Tagata. Like Kasuki did before All Might gave a recap to make sure he got everything right. So let me get this straight. You were killed by this weird monster called a hollow. 
After you died you became a hollow and eventually fused with a bunch of other hollows and became what's called a Jillian, which is like a giant thing that's stupid and only really follows orders. After that you evolved again and became another level of hollow called an Ajurchus. Then after that you eventually evolved again to a state only a select few of these monsters can achieve called Vasto Lord, but as a result your Riatsu or whatever killed everyone who got too close. Then after being lonely for years your mask cracked leaving only that part around your neck, which caused you to evolve again, and you began walking around because you were bored and lonely. Did I get all of that right? Yep. Wow that's quite the story my boy. I can tell you are quite powerful. Maybe even as strong as I am. So my boy would you like to be a hero? Might as well I don't have anything better to do. Also as much as I hate to burst your bubble dude, even if you are the number one hero you're still weaker than me and that's just a fact. Ah uh, kid, you do realize you're talking to All Might right? Mirio asked. But he is doesn't change the facts. Besides I didn't even know who he was until just now. The ranker deadpanned. Mrs. Midoriya due to your son's unique circumstances I would like to take him to meet the principal to see if he can get into UA, would this be acceptable? All Might asked as he brushed off Izuku's arrogance. Inko quickly agreed and Katsuki supported the decision, since he already qualified for the hero entrance exam. After meeting with the principal Izuku was allowed to participate, although he did have to catch up academically which Katsuki had no issue helping with. Izuku's time in Hueco Mundo didn't diminish his intelligence, and he got caught up to where he would have been had he not died in the 10 months leading up to the exam. He walked with Katsuki to Yue with his Zanpakuto in an inconspicuous case his mother bought, so he could keep the embodiment of his soul with him at all times. Once they reached the gate of UA they both took a deep breath. Kasuki's was one of excitement. Izuku's was one of exasperation. And with that they crossed the threshold towards their future. Chapter 2. Start of the school year Kasuki and Izuku both crossed the threshold of UA at the same time, the only difference is that Izuku tripped mid yon Before he could face plant however something wrapped around him preventing his full. Wow you must be really tired or really nervous if you trip that easily. A smug sounding voice said. Tired. Izuku stated nonchalantly. He looked down and realized that flesh-colored earphone jacks were what prevented him from falling. He turned around and realized they were connected to a smug-looking girl's earlobe. I'd like to know the name of the person I'm thanking if that's alright. Kyokajiro. Pleased to meet you, sleepyhead. She said. Izuku Kami. Kasuki winced slightly at Izuku's fake last name. I appreciate your help Ms. Jiro. Haha had just Jiro is fine dude, we are the same age after all. You seem like a chill dude, what course are you trying for? Hero course. That's pretty cool, so my maybe will be in the same class. Either way I'll see you around dude. Likewise. It was nice meeting you. I like that the girl took her leave. Kasuki decided to try and tease Izuku about his interaction with the girl. Well back from the dead and already you have a girlfriend huh? Not really. I doubt she really even considers me anything more than an acquaintance at this point. But you want something more don't you? I came back to the world of the living to experience human connection, so I suppose you're right. Well you'll have plenty of chances at a high school, even if it is the number one hero school. That's why I'm here. I like that the two friends walked into the school together. Despite Kasuki bullying Izuku in the past the ranker gave his old bully a second chance, seeing as he seemed remorseful, and Izuku didn't remember what happened to begin with. Despite maintaining his arrogance after Izuku's death, Kasuki mellowed out a bit after his old friend's passing. The 10 months leading up to the UA entrance exam helped him shed that arrogance, although that might be due to how strong Izuku is in comparison to the entire living world. After taking the written exam both Izuku and Katsuki felt confident that they passed. They made their way to the auditorium where the information for the practical would be given. They sat down and chatted for a couple minutes before President Mick came out and began giving his speech. When talking about the different robots and their point values a boy with glasses and dark blue hair pointed out the zero pointer. During this sequence of events Izuku yawned. The boy with glasses took exception to this. You there. Stop yawning. This is a highly respected exam. If you won't take it seriously then leave. How about you mind your own business glasses? Kasuki retorted. Alright kids that's enough my explanation isn't done yet. Present Mick said calming the two students. Present Mick finished his explanation and all the students went to their designated areas. Izuku saw Jiro mentally preparing herself and went to wish her luck. Unfortunately the serious boy with glasses intervened. You're planning to throw her off her game to give yourself a higher chance of passing right. As I said if you won't take this seriously then leave. And like my friend said mind your own business. She helped me out this morning and I'm going to wish her luck. That's a polite thing to do right. Izuku said without stopping or missing a beat. The boy with glasses seemed shocked at this as he didn't say another word. Once Izuku made it to Jiro he spoke to her. Hey Jiro. Oh you're a commie right? What's up dude? I wanted to wish you luck. I've been told that's a nice thing to do. PFT you've been told. I didn't get out much as a kid, so my social skills aren't the best. Oh shit my bad dude I didn't know. 
It's fine. Anyway, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Truth be told, I was a little nervous. Best of luck to you, too. Thank you. They agreed to exchange numbers after the exam so they could tell each other how they did. Present Mick shouted go without a countdown, and that was all the signal Izuku needed as he rushed forward. The other contestants followed shortly after once the pro pointed out a real fight doesn't have a countdown. Izuku used his pesquisa in order to find the robots that would be turned into villain points. The ranker moved around at a leisurely pace, ending each robot in one kick regardless of value. He easily scored the most points without even taking his hands out of his pocket. Everything was going quite well until the zero pointer appeared. He was just going to walk away from it until he saw Juro trapped under some rubble. While his mind told him that the heroes wouldn't allow someone to be killed his instincts took over. Wolves are pack animals, and that instinct stuck with him, even as in a rancor albeit lessened. He used Sunido to appear behind her. She heard the buzz of the high speed movement technique, and was quite shocked when he appeared behind her. Izuka lifted the rubble off of her and picked her up with one hand before buzzing to a safe distance. After a visit from recovery girl both of the teenagers went and got changed. Izuku and Katsuki left the school and were waved over by Jiro. Hey Kami, thanks again for saving me during the exam. Saved you from what? Katsuki asked curiously. The zero pointer. He used his cork to get me out from under some rubble. Katsuki looked puzzled before Izuku simply stated the word Sumido. Katsuki introduced himself before leaving the two together as he went home. Jiro took Izuku to a cafe to get something to eat. Both of them got a sandwich and some coffee and began talking about themselves. Izuku learned that Jiro was an avid fan of music. She liked several different bands from several different genres. Izuku took note of all of them and promised to check them out. So tell me about yourself Akami. Are you sure? My story is a pretty crazy, and not exactly for the faint of heart. At least that's what Kasuki and my mom told me to tell people if I decided to tell anyone. If it's super personal you don't have to share dude. I don't particularly care who knows about me and who doesn't. It's up to you really. Well you've got me curious so lay it on me. Alright to start off my explanation of myself I should point out that I died at the age of 7. Then how are you here? Jiro said visibly skeptical. I'll get to it. Don't sound so skeptical, whether or not you believe me is of no concern to me, but I am not lying. Okay so you died. How? I was murdered by a monster called a hollow. There's fears of despair and emptiness that feast on the souls of both the living and the deceased. Since during life I had formed no connections, had no passion, and did nothing other than school work and sleep, I qualified as empty and became a hollow a couple days after my death. Hold on how could you be that empty at 7 years old? I was quirkless. Before you ask I'll get to my abilities in a little bit. Hollows have different levels I guess you could say. The first level is me knows any newly formed hollow will be this. Forms between hollows vary, mine was that of a wolf hence my last name. Eventually Minos merge into a giant mindless beast called a Jillian. Most Jillians have identical white masks and black robes, but when I was a Jillian I was an oddity. My robes were green, and my mask was similar to a wolf mask. The color of my robe spawned the name that I would be called for a majority of my time as a hollow. Eventually the strongest will of a Jillian will reign supreme, and then the next stage of the hollow evolutionary cycle, the Ajuchas stage is achieved. Despite my less than motivated nature I came out on top. My Ajuchas form wasn't too different I was just a bigger wolf. I traveled around by myself since I was strong enough to do so. You see Hueco Mundo, the land where hollows reside, is ruled by the law of survival of the fittest. We grow and evolve by eating either souls or each other. I was strong so I would make a good meal. I killed and consumed whoever tried to do the same to me. The next stage of hollow evolution is heavily debated. Vassal lords exist yet only certain hollows achieve that stage. Some say it has to do with destiny, I personally don't particularly care. Regardless of the how, I became a Vasto lord, and eventually everything died. What do you mean everything died? My Ryatsu, the source of hollow powers, was so strong that anything too weak that got too close to me died. Juro looked shocked, but Izuku didn't miss a beat. After several years I guess my will to form a connection to something or someone grew strong enough that I evolved again. My mask cracked leaving only the fragment around my neck, and I am as you see me now, an Aranker. I got some clothes and began exploring the world of the living when I met Kasuki, an old friend of mine from when I was alive. He took me to my mother. He and I decided to attend UA, and here we are. Jesus Christ that sounds like hell. Hell's an entirely different piece of work, but even I don't know too much about it. So what was that teleporting thing you did? You never really explained your abilities. Hollows and by extension Arankers have several abilities. Sunido, the thing I used to save you, uses Riatsu to propel our bodies at insanely high speeds. We have a hero which basically means our skin can't be cuz, unless our opponent is strong enough. Vesquisa uses Riatsu as a kind of sonar granted it's much more specific and accurate. We have what is called a Sira where we concentrate our Riatsu into a ball and fire a kinda like a laser beam. We have Ballas which is a ball of Riatsu that's fired like a bullet. It's weaker than a Sira, but it's much faster. 
as in the rancor my powers are sealed into a sword, which I have in this case here. Our swords are called Santhakudo and are basically an extension of our soul. Being in a rancor also lets me control my Riyatsu better so I don't kill everything. Woo. That's a lot of powers. Even one of those would be a really powerful quirk. They're useful abilities to have in Hueco Mundo. I'd imagine geez. Um you probably gotten this a lot, but can you show me your powers? Juro said hopefully. If one of us doesn't make it in I'll show you once we find out. If we both make it in you'll likely see them at some point during class. That sounds good to me dude. Oh crap it's really late. I gotta go I'll see you around Akami. If you'd like I can take you home. Sunido and all of that. Oh my god that'd be so helpful. So Izuku used Sunido to take Jiro home. He met her parents and explained his presence by saying he walked her to her house due to his mother, saying it was polite. The two teenagers said their goodbyes and agreed to hang out again sometime. Izuku made it home pretty quickly and went to bed. After some time Izuku got the results saying that he passed, not that he was expecting otherwise. He also placed first in the practical and third in the written, which he also expected. He got a call from Jiro where he learned that not only did she pass, they would also be in class one together. They agreed to hang out and invited Katsuki this time as well. They did several things like go to arcades, visit different stores at the mall, and even did Karak. Both Izuku and Jiro hang out several times leading up to the school year, both with and without Katsuki. All three friends agreed that they couldn't wait for the school year. Well Jiro and Katsuki couldn't wait. Izuku was rather indifferent as always. The first day of school arrived and the three amigos that were Izuku, Katsuki, and Kayoka, who asked to be called by her first name seeing as the three all became great friends since the entrance exam, all walked into class, only to be greeted by the boy with glasses from said exam. Akami. I apologize for my quick judgments of you. You understood the true meaning of the exam by saving Jiro. You truly are the better contestant. The boy said while bowing. Thanks. Izuku said simply. I am Tenya Ida it is a pleasure to meet the three of you. I'm Izuku Akami. Kasuki Bakugo. Kayoka Jiro. The three friends sat next to each other and chatted for a bit before the teacher came in. Shota Izawa, also known as the pro hero racerhead, scolded the class for not being rational enough, and sent them outside for the quirk assessment exam. Kasuki demonstrated the ball throw with his explosion quirk. A bunch of students said that it looked fun, and Izawa threatened the person who placed last with expulsion. Like that the tests began. The tests were the 50 meter dash, the grip strength test, sustained side to side jumping, and the ball throw. Unsurprisingly Izuku came first in every single thing even without using any of his abilities. The grape-headed kid who Izuku couldn't bother to remember came last and was crying. Izawa surprised all of the class minus Izuku and a girl with a ponytail who placed second by stating the expulsion was a logical ruse to bring out the best from the students. The next day the students introduced themselves to their classmates. Izuku merely said his name and that he was strong before yawning and sitting back down. They went through several normal classes like English, Math, Science, and History. Finally the class everyone was waiting for came. The heroics class. I am coming through the door like a normal person. All Might shouted as he entered the class. All the other students were really excited, except for Izuku who thought that he wasn't at all being normal. Today class will focus on battle training. The actions were mixed. Some like Mineta and Hagakure were nervous. Others like Katsuki and Kirishima were excited. Izuku was relatively indifferent. Well, I should at least be able to compare them to hollows in strength. Izuku thought as he changed into his hero costume. Ayan imagined Sterk's Ranker outfit if the white was replaced with dark green. As he stepped out several people commented that he looked like a samurai with a sword at his hip. The students drew lots to decide their partners. Sir surely there is a better way to decide partners. Yida said. Don't heroes have to make impromptu team up some time? Izuku countered. You are correct forgive my ignorance. Izuku was paired with Kayoka. Kasuki was paired with Ida. Yuraka was paired with Asui. Ajiro was paired with Hagakure. Mineta was paired with Kaminari. Todoroki was paired with Yoi Rosa. Shaoji was paired with Koda. Aoyama was paired with Sato. Ashido was paired with Kirishima. Siro was paired with Tokoyami. The first battle will be Young Midoriya and Young Jiro versus Young Todoroki and Young Yoi Rosa. Chapter 3. Battle training me and Kayoka against Ponytail and Half and Halfa. Hopefully it isn't too much work. Izuku thought nonchalantly. Meanwhile Kayoka's thoughts were much different. Holy crap. We're going against the two kids who got in from recommendations. Even if Izuku's as crazy strong as Kasuki says this is still nerve-wracking. It was decided that Yeoi Rozu and Todoroki were villains, so the two heroes were waiting for the signal to enter. The two friends decided to talk a bit in order to pass the time and calm Kayoka's nerves. So what do you think our chances are dude? I don't really know, it's hard to gauge how strong they are without using Riatsu as a basis. Once we actually start it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out. Well I mean worse comes to worst you can always Sunido to the bomb right. In theory. Ha. Huh? What do you mean? 
Ponytail has the top academic rank of the class. Besides, she came in second during the quirk apprehension test, and would have placed first had I not been here. She's likely to have some form of complex trap around the bomb. Should you write. The heroes may now proceed to the building. Best of luck young students. Oh boy. Relax. Your ability is useful in this particular scenario. I'll deal with half sigh and you can find the bomb. Right, right. Okay, let's go. The two entered the building, and Izuku immediately used Pisquisa to find Todoroki. He wouldn't tell her where the bomb is, since this is supposed to be a challenge for her as well. They decided to split up from the get-go, so Izuku would be able to challenge Todoroki, and Kayoka would be able to find the bomb. Izuku made his way towards Todoroki, but the boy didn't like the ranker's laid-back demeanor. Do you really think being rank number one means you can take it easy around the rest of us? Being number one has nothing to do with it. I'm just a lazy guy. Todoroki seemed to take exception to this as he launched a wave of ice towards the green-colored ranker. He proceeded to be shocked when Izuku dodged with minimal effort. Todoroki launched wave after wave of ice, and Izuku dodged each and every one with minimal effort. Izuku didn't even need to use Sunido, his natural speed was enough. Everyone watching had their own comments to make. Kirishima. Dude. That's so freaking manly. Kasuki. Hate to spoil its shitty hair, but Izuku is probably the strongest person in this school. Beide. Well he does seem to be excellent at dodging calling him the strongest seems to be a stretch. If he's so strong why isn't he attacking? Kaminari. Beide makes a pretty good point. If he's so strong why is he playing around with Todoroki? Kasuki. Izuku's unfortunately lazy, but that doesn't mean he's weak. Besides, he doesn't like crushing those weaker than him, he prefers to give them a chance so they can learn as they fight. Yuraka. Learn as they fight. Kirishima. I think he means Akami lets fights drag on, so that his opponents are forced to think outside the box in order to try and beat him. Is that right Bakubro? Kasuki. Bullseye shitty hair. Shoji. That seems a little arrogant to me. Kasuki. You don't understand tentacles. Izuku has never lost a fight. Ashido. Jeez, really. How has he not lost once? Asi. He may have only fought weak opponents Rupert. Kitsuki. Are you calling me weak frog face? Hagaker. Whoa. Didn't you score really high on the practical too? Siro. Even Bakugo can't beat this guy. Holy crap. Meanwhile Jiro had found the bomb, and was currently trying to come up with a way make it there without having to deal with Yoirozu. She decided that she needed to use all of the tools at her disposal. Hey Izuku. Do you think you can come up with something to draw Yoi Rozu away from the bomb? Sure give me a sec. Well here's to hoping now. Todoroki's right side was getting covered with frost, and his movements were becoming slower and slower. Izuku estimated that he was about as strong as a low level of judges at best. It wasn't too hard to tell that the boy's left side was untouched, and thus likely had another half to his quirk, which could possibly raise him to a mid or high level of judges. Regardless it was time to end the fight. Sorry pal, but I'm done with my job. Izuku said as he rushed forward and threw Todoroki with enough force that it launched him out of the building. Yoirozu heard the crash and ran out to check on her partner, only to find herself face to face with Izuku. Yo? Where's Todoroki? A good distance that way. Izuku said as he pointed towards the hole in the building. Yoirozu's eyes widened with shock before she created a staff and prepared to fight the green-themed boy in front of her. Izuku just yawned and nodded at her, signaling her to attack. However just before she was able to swing her staff, All Might called out that Jiro had captured the bomb. Unfortunately Momo could not stop the momentum of the swing before the staff came into contact with Izuku's face. Oh my god. I'm so sorry I didn't mean tea. It's fine. But I smacked you in the face with a steel bow staff. I don't really care so it's fine. Don't worry about it too much. Izuku then started walking away before Yoi Rozu could protest anymore. All Might discussed with the class and announced that Jiro was the MVP, since she played to her advantages, rather than toying around with an opponent, getting irritated, or leaving the bomb undefended. The job, Kayoka. Izuku said while giving her small almost unnoticeable smile. Kayoka however noticed and blushed a little bit. T thanks Izuku. I didn't expect to be the MVP of the match. It makes sense. Yay, but it's still kind of surreal you know. I can kind of understand. I never had any doubts on how you would do though. Kayoka blushed at the praise before walking home with Katsuki and Izuku. Before the friends parted Kayoka gave Izuku a short hug before running towards her train. Katsuki teased Izuku about Kayoka being his girlfriend all the way home with Izuku disagreeing. As Izuku left Katsuki while entering his house, he couldn't help but ponder his relationship with his short-haired friend. I certainly find her attractive and we get along really well. Is this what it's like to have a romantic connection with someone? Ha, huh, it seems interesting, but it also seems like kind of a pain if it isn't reciprocated. Izuku decided to talk to his mother about his conundrum. As expected she started crying and hugging and spouting nonsense about her baby boy having a crush. 
After she calmed down she had the same general conclusion that he had and wished him the best of luck in his potential love life. Izuku then went to sleep with his last thought being one of Jiro. Chapter 4 This Jay Izuku reluctantly woke up like normal before he noticed a cluster of Riatsu on the back of his right hand. When he looked down he saw a green wolf hat tattooed on his hand. Him. I wonder. The green haired boy thought as he got dressed and walked downstairs. Right as he got downstairs however, Kasuki's mother crashed through the door with her son in tow. Izuku why the fuck does my son have a tattoo on his shoulder? The blonde haired woman shouted as Izuku plugged his ears. I don't really know honestly. I had a hypothesis when I woke up, but now that Katsuki's here I can test it. The ranker said as he walked up to Katsuki and stared at his shoulder for a few seconds. I apologize. Izuku said well bound. After a lot of yelling from both mothers and Katsuki, Izuku explained himself. You see I have an identical tattoo on my hand only mine is green, and Katsuki's is orange. Just like mine Katsuki's is a cluster of Riatsu. Riatsu remarkably similar to mine. As I mentioned when I first came back from Waco Mundo I was a wolf hollow. My hypothesis is that this symbolizes Kasuki being a part of my pack. If I'm correct Kayaka probably has one too, and I'm going to get yelled at again. Izuku said as his phone started ringing. Ha speak of the devil. After a repeat of the explanation the three friends made their way to school. All three of them were quite happy once everything was explained. Izuku was happy he'd formed connections, Kasuki was happy that he redeemed himself, and Kayaka was happy that a crush I mean friend valued her so much. Once the trio got to school it was revealed that class 1A and 1B would have joint training at the USJ. Once on the bus the high school banter started. All but two students talked amongst themselves. Izuku was napping and Todoroki was glaring at Izuku. Once they got there a blonde kid from 1B started making a fuss. So this is class 1A huh? You lot don't look like much. Why is that? Isn't 1A supposed to be the better class? The kid ranted and raved. Izuku didn't pay him any mind and walked past an orange haired girl. Greetings was all he said before continuing on waiting in front of the teacher. The girl didn't take any offense and just assumed that Izuku was soft-spoken and decided to introduce herself later. The Space Hero 13 started talking about the dangers of quirks and the roles of rescue heroes. Several students were excited to be around the hero, but Izuku was indifferent as usual. Primarily because he doesn't know many heroes. In the middle of 13's speech however a dark portal opened up on the ground. This isn't what caught Izuku's attention though. Mr. Izawa is always that supposed to be there. Kirishima asked as he pointed towards the dark portal. No, it isn't. Thirteen protect the students, villains are here. As always said which shocked the students minus Izuku. I hate to burst your bubble, but you lot have far bigger problems than a bunch of villains. Izuku said as he watched cracks form in the air. This caused both the pros and the students alike to grow confused. What do you mean bigger problems Rupert? Sayu asked. The A villains are a pretty big problem. Yuraka agreed. Izuku's eyes narrowed as the cracks burst open into Gargantus. Izuku then stated one word which confused most of those present, but shook Kayaka and Kasuki to their very core. Hollows. Wait, wait, wait Izuku are you shitting me, Kasuki said as Kayaka started shaking in fear. What are these hollow things? Yuraka asked right as Izuku grabbed the blade of his Anthakuto aimed right at the girl's heart. The girl squealed before falling backwards while Izuku scowled and an unknown ranker sighed. Man I was hoping to get at least one without someone noticing. Oh well. The name's Dairoi, pleased to meet you green. The ranker said with a sadistic grin before Izuku threw him down near the villains. Now that was just rude. Alright you dirtbags it's feeding time. Tyroy yelled as several judges exited the Gargantus. Kayaka. Katsuki. Explain. Izuku said as he walked down the steps after firing several balls that killed every hollow except the ranker who dodged. Yeesh they said you were good, but you're really good. The ranker said as he pointed his Xanthakudo at the Emerald Ranker. Izuku remained silent as he continued to walk down the steps. Meanwhile class 1 and 1b had their whole world view rocked by the explanation they had been given. The villains however grew irritated that their spotlight had been stolen. Naomu. Kill these losers. Kill them, kill them, kill them right now. A villain covered in hands shouted as a purple humanoid with an exposed brain and a beat charged at the two rankers. Izuka used a zero to disintegrate the Naomu. The display of power frightened his classmates and teachers minus his two friends. Who sent you a ranker? Izuku asked with no semblance of patience in his voice. I was sent under the orders of the sex to spot a grim Jujiju Jackis. The ranker answered as he swung his Zanthakudo only for Izuku to catch it again. Riveting. Someone of minimal importance. Izuku said as he charged a zero right in front of the ranker's face. Is Akami going to kill that man too? Iida asked incredibly outraged. Weren't you paying attention glasses? The guy's already dead. So is Izuku and so were those hollows. Kasuki said as he watched the weaker ranker try and fail to pull his Zanthakudo from Izuku's grip. Akami. Stand down right now. As always shouted. Izuku glanced over to his teacher before sighing. 
He deboard his Ciro before opening a garganta and throwing Dai Roy through the interdimensional portal. Izuku then sunidoed back up to where the students were and started walking back to the bus. Akami give me one reason why I shouldn't expel you right now. The teacher said as he wrapped his capture scarf around the green-haired student. Not only did you kill multiple villains you also helped one get away. What do you have to say for yourself? Izuku responded without missing a beat. When those hollows are already dead, two that purple weaking might as well have been dead, three you humans have nothing that would be able to hold in a rancor. Will those answers suffice? If not do feel free to expel me. Everyone looked at Izuku with a shocked expression. No one had expected someone as laid back as him to be able to do what they just witnessed. Gyoi Rose stepped forward. Akami, may I ask how you were able to kill so easily? The girl asked as her knees trembled. Izuku then looked over to his two friends. Don't look at us we told them like you told us. Kayaka said in their defense. I lived in Waco Mundo, which is where I sent that annoyance back to. In Waco Mundo there is one law and only one law. The strong live and the weak die. It's that simple. Why are you here Ribbit? There must be a reason. Sayu asked with her finger under her chin. I wouldn't expect any of you to understand. Izuku said before pointing at Kayaka and Kasuki. I don't think they even fully understand what it is I feel and why I came here. Then make us understand dude. Come on we're your classmates. How are we supposed to trust you, work with you, and fight alongside you if you don't tell us anything? Kirishima pleaded. Izuku sighed before releasing some of his Riatsu which sent everyone present crumbling to the ground. What you're feeling is my Riatsu, the source of all of my abilities. This sliver sent all of you to the ground. My full unrestrained power caused any hollow that got too close to me to die. My mere presence killed any life that got too close. So I became in a rancor and sealed my power. Izuku said as he eased up on his power which allowed everyone to breathe and stand once more. As I said Mr. Izawa you're free to expel me if you wish, but that sliver was weaker than that rancor's full strength. So tell me do you humans have any way to contain such a thing? I suppose we don't. So are you saying the only way to stop these hollows and rancors is to kill them? The teacher said as he wrapped his capture tool around his neck. Yes. If you let them live they'll come back stronger. Izuku said. And none of us humans are strong enough to fight them. Vlad King asked. It depends. The stronger members of both classes could have likely beaten those at judges. Certain pros are even capable of fighting against low-level Vasto lords. However if All Might is the strongest then none of you stand a chance against an Aranker. That's just the fact of the matter. Izuku stated simply. I think that's just your opinion. According to the story Bakugo and Juro told us you were unable to recognize All Might. Meaning you are unaware of how strong he is. Todoriki said as a subtle challenge towards Izuku. Believe what you wish. I don't really care for the opinion of someone perpetually fighting at half strength. Izuku retorted. Once the students made it back to the school Izuku walked home with Kasuki and Kayaka as per usual. He thanked the two for sticking with him and went inside. He needed a nap especially if his theory on who the first Espada was is true. He really hated that old man after all. Chapter 5. Training in Waco Mundo the USJ incident as it has been called changed a lot of things. The first and most obvious thing to most people was that it called a lot of negative media attention to Yue. The second change that was still obvious, but to less people, pertained to Izuku. With the exception of Katsuki and Kayaka everyone in the hero course was scared of him. Not all of them would admit it, but that didn't change the fact that the rancor terrified the students of 1 and 1B. This became most apparent to the boy when a certain someone approached him in class. Amo Akami. I j just want a T to you know as say a T thanks. F for why you know as saving me from T that a W whatever he was. Said one Achako Uraka who was clearly uncomfortable being near the more lethal of her two green haired classmates. I appreciate the gesture, but you don't need to force yourself to talk to me. You clearly uncomfortable at best and terrified at worst. Besides saving people is what heroes are supposed to do is it not? The Emerald Ranker said nonchalantly. Killing on the other hand is not. That fact will keep you from being a hero for the rest of your life. I have no idea why you're still here, Mr. Izawa should have expelled you and turned you in for what you did. You may think that you belong here, but you don't. Said Iida passionately. Fuck off you four-eyed son of a bike Kasuki started before being cut off by Izuku. Kasuki I'm a big boy I can take care of myself. Iida you may think that your opinion matters and in any other circumstance it might. However in this case your opinion is irrelevant. He said which caused several gasps throughout the classroom. Your opinion is backed by a biased view of me, and a complete lack of knowledge in regards to the world I come from, and the things that inhabit it. If anything I did the souls trapped inside those hollows a service by sending them back into the cycle of reincarnation. However I can promise you that the rancor is all what made me release will be back and with a vengeance. That's just a fact of the matter, and facts will always outweigh opinions. That's enough. Class is now in session. As all was said which prompted all of the students to return to their seats. The USJ incident was tough. Tougher for some more than others. The teacher said as he glanced at Izuku. However your fight isn't over. 
This caused several students to panic before Izawa cleared his throat, signaling that he was going to continue. The sports festival is coming up. Shouldn't the sports festival be cancelled? What if villains attack again? Or even worse? Said Kirishima who was clearly nervous. As he should be. I gotta agree with him on that one. Said Izuku which shot the red-haired boy. Villains aren't much of an issue to me, but hollows however are a different story. A vast majority if not all heroes aren't prepared for them, and unlike villains they can come and go as they please. The continuation of the sports festival is a show of strength on our part. It's to show that the villain attack hasn't shaken us. As for hollows, the media has no knowledge of them, and cancelling the sports festival for something the media doesn't know about would cause a panic. As Zawa responded. Izuka couldn't really argue so he just nodded signaling the teacher to continue. All of you will have two weeks to do training of your choice in preparation for the sports festival. That's all, you're dismissed. As Zawa said. However once the classroom door was opened up no one could get out due to a crowd of students blocking the way. After several questions and a few unreasonable theories about why they were there, Izuku spoke up. I'd say that they're scouting out the competition. From the looks of it none of them are from 1B, which is the only other first year hero class. Which means they're from the business, support, or gen ed departments. If I was in their position I'd do the same after all the hero course is the only one that involves combat training, so we're arguably the biggest threat in the sports festival. How intuitive of you. I guess the hero course isn't just for show. You see if students from other courses prove themselves well enough they can get moved up into the hero course. Granted that means hero course students that underperform can get dropped. A student with purple hair and a severe case of lethargy stated. I see. I was unaware of that, but it's good to know. I assume you're trying for the hero course so I'd like to know the name of my potential future classmate if that's alright with you. The ranker said while looking just as lethargic as the boy he addressed said. I like you, you have manners. My name is Itachi Shinso. However I'm not the only one you should consider. The newly named Shinso responded. You really are. To some your appearance tells the story of an insomniac who wouldn't pose much of a threat. To me however you're more dangerous than some of my classmates. It was nice meeting you Shinso, but I'll be leaving now. I look forward to seeing what you can do in this sports festival. Izuku said as he walked over to Kayaka and Katsuki. He put a hand on both of their shoulders and used Sunido to leave the class. Izuku and his friends reappeared in front of Kayaka's house. Kayaka get changed Katsuki and I will be back after he and I get changed. After that we start training. Izuku said as he sunidoed away once more. Once everyone was dressed up in their UA gym uniforms, Katsuki asked a rather important question. So Izuku how are we gonna be training? Izuku let a rare smile appear on his face before opening a garganta. We're gonna be training my way. Once in Waco Mundo the two humans began freaking out. Izuku you're my best friend, but where the actual fuck are we? Katsuki shouted. I gotta agree with Katsuki. I have no idea where we are. Kayaka said while trembling a little. But we're in Waco Mundo. Izuk said nonchalantly. 3. 2. 1. What? The two friends shouted. Let me explain. You see after sensing the Riatsu from your tattoos I realized something. It's not entirely mine. Izuku said which confused his two trainees. What does that mean? Kayaka asked. It means you two have Riatsu of your own. Arguably our class does too. You see I came up with this hypothesis on the way back from the USJ. When I died I wasn't able to see the hollow at first. However the closer I got to death, the more I was able to see it. However all of you have been able to see me from the get-go. Which leads me to my conclusion. Quirks are a byproduct of Riatsu. That makes sense. I don't really understand how though. Katsuki said. I'm no scientist, but my theory is that over the centuries upon centuries that hollows have been active the buildup of Riatsu gradually affected the human population. As that effect grew quirks came to be. Which would explain why I wasn't able to see hollows until death, due to my quirklessness. The Emerald Ranker theorized. Okay so how are we gonna train? Kayaka asked. Simple. I'm gonna teach you how to use Riatsu. First off we're gonna go with basic Riatsu control. Before that have you noticed any sensation where your tattoo is that is out of the ordinary? So your first goal is to spread that sensation throughout your body. Surprisingly while Kasuki struggled a little bit Kayaka was a natural at Riatsu control. Her Riatsu was violet as opposed to Izuku's turquoise. After about an hour and a half Kasuki got it down too, with his Riatsu being orange in color. Izuku spent the rest of the day having them manipulating their Riatsu in various ways to gain control over it. The second day was spent on condensing Riatsu to stand in midair. Both students were quite horrible at it, so this training took up the third day as well. The fourth day was training to utilize high-speed movement. After spending so much time on air platforms they were able to pick it up pretty quickly. Their high-speed movement made more of a whooshing sound, rather than the static sound of Sunido. Why does yours sound different? I don't really know, but my guess is that human Riatsu is different from hollow Riatsu. Izuku said which satisfied their curiosity. 
the sixth day was spent on Ryatsu sensing, as well as channeling Ryatsu into attacks. Kayaka learned that by channeling Ryatsu through her jacks, she could actually project the sound in the form of a long-range attack. She also used Ryatsu to improve the strength of her hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kisuki was able to use his Ryatsu to change the direction of his explosions. This took the form of a thin orange line which could move around before releasing the explosion. The seventh day was a summary of everything they learned while also being endurance training. By the time their first week of training was done Kayaka and Kasuki could both take on high-level adjutches on their own with minimal trouble, and could take down low-level Vasto lords while teaming up. All in all Izuku was very proud of his students' friends. Strines. Maybe Ferdins. Questions for later. The two of you've done great. This is my first time teaching anything so I didn't expect it to go this smoothly. Izuku said with a soft smile on his face. Ah come on. We only got this far with you here to teach us. Kasuki said while fist bumping his friend and teacher. Yay and because of that we can protect people from villains and hollows. Kayaka said as she hugged her two friends. Yes you can. We'll get ready cause next week we're gonna be training in the world of the living. Izuku said. What's the difference? Kasuki asked slightly confused. The difference is that Waco Mundo is completely made of spirit energy, so it's easier to use here. It'll be tougher to do in the living world until you get used to it. Hey Izuku can we do a little get together with our parents? I don't usually like showing off, but I wanna show em how far I've come. Kayaka asked while twirling one of her jacks. Sure I don't see why not. I'd advise not using any of these in the sports festival. Physical enhancement aside, you won't really need them. And so the Midoriya, Bakugo, and Jiro households gathered at Tagaba Beach to watch the progression of Kasuki and Kayaka. So you're gonna show us the results of your training, huh? You better not disappoint Brad. Misuki Bakugo said despite the look of excitement in her eyes. Please don't overexert yourself, dear. Mikajiro said as her husband nodded in agreement. So what are you guys gonna do? Inko Midoriya asked which garnered a look from all the parents involved. They're gonna be fighting me. Izuku said which shocked everyone including Kayaka and Kasuki. What the fuck Izuku? We can't beat you. Kasuki exclaimed while Kayaka agreed. It's not about beating me. It's about showing how far you've come. Besides you haven't fought an Aranker yet. Know your enemy they always say. Izuku stated. They couldn't really argue so the two students got into fighting stances while the parents looked on worriedly. Kasuki made the first move flashing behind Izuku and launching a knee to Izuku's head. Izuku dodged which shocked his mother and Kasuki's parents, as he never dodged any of the blonde's attacks before. Kayaka followed up by flashing above him and launching sound waves at the rancor which shocked her parents, even as Izuku snedoed out of the way. As he reappeared Hove he saw an orange line right as it exploded. As he reappeared from the smoke his right hand was scratched and the sleeve was singed. Kayaka then blindsided him and hit him with some sound waves. The fight continued on and ended up with Katsuki and Kayaka on the ground, breathing heavily and Izuku standing with a few scratches on him. I know I already said this, but I'm proud of you guys. That was the level of an upper mid-tier Vasto Lord. You guys have improved leaps and bounds in only a week, and I can't wait to see how far you'll go. Izuku said with his biggest smile to date. Which still isn't that big, but it's progress. I see what you mean when you said it's harder in the living world. Man I fell so slow. Kasuki said in between pants. No kidding. It's like working with weights. Kayaka added. Wait you said living world. Which implies that you trained somewhere else. Izuku please don't tell me. Inko said as she came to a realization. I trained them in Waco Mundo. Izuku deadpanned. This caused all the parents involved to freak out and ask what in the hell possessed him to do that. Logic. Waco Mundo is filled to the brim with spirit energy, so training first-timers there is a no-brainer. Besides they were never really in any danger seeing as I was there. And even now they can hold their own better than some pros. Izuku explained. This seemed to satisfy the parents somewhat. What completely calmed them down is that they would spend the remaining time until the sports festival in the world of the living. It wouldn't be too bad since it's just adjusting to a new environment. It's not like rankers are gonna attack right. Chapter 6. The ranker attack it was the third day of the second week when our Ryatsu using protagonists felt a massive amount of Ryatsu into the world of the living. Izuku. Is this what I think it is? Kayaka asked. There's no way it isn't Kayaka. For once I'm not raring to go. Kasuki stated seriously. Yay. The rankers are here. From the looks of it an Espada is here too. Izuku said grimly. An Espada? You've never used that term before. Kasuki asked. Dairoi from the SJ said that he was sent by the Sexer of the Sixth Espada. Which would mean that Espadas are likely the strongest of the strong when it comes to rankers. Izuku said needless to say I'll be taking him on. You two help you can. Go all out don't hold back. My only order as your teacher is that you are not allowed to die. The three then flashed away to different areas where rankers were. Unfortunately the fighting had already begun. The UA Dairoi appeared and was confronted by the UA faculty. Eraser had spoke up. 
You the one from the Yusche. The one Akami let go. I guess I owe him an apology. After we take you down of course. Take me down. That's rich. I might as well introduce myself since I only introduced myself to Green last time. I'm Dairoi Fratchian of the Sexta Espada. The ranker stated. Eraser had pro hero and teacher at UA. As always stated. Shota, would you call all of us? This guy doesn't look like much. Present Mick stated with the other teachers agreeing. He may not look like much, but he's not to be underestimated Mick. At the USJ he almost killed Yuraka before anyone other than Akami could react. As always stated. This may be the biggest threat we've faced so far so get ready. In a different part of the city two Redeeds faced one another. The pro hero Endeavor stood face to face with his own ranker opponent. What's your name human? The ranker asked out of respect for the man's flames. I'm the number two pro hero Endeavor. Don't think you can get away villain. The proud hero stated, unaware of the challenge he'd be presented with. Ha you're quite full of yourself. I'm Edward Lyons, Fratchian of the Sexa Espada. You've got some nice flames human. Let's put them to the test. The ranker said as he got into a fighting stance. Elsewhere a ranker stood face to face with Fatim and his intern. I am Nakim, Fratchian of the Sexta Espada. You will fall today human. The newly named ranker stated. Not likely buddy. I'm Fatim, I would say nice to meet you, but that clearly isn't the case. I'm Sun Eater. We'll bring you in villain. Tamaki Amichiki said. And those are some interesting costumes you humans have. My brother would be quite interested. Said a blonde ranker. You have quite the interesting get up too. Are you a samurai? What's with that bone on your head? Is it part of your quirk? Nijire Hato asked repeatedly. You will fall villain. I am the dragon hero Ryukyu. Said the aforementioned pro. And I am Gangworka. Your destruction will not go unpunished. I am Milford Grands, Fratchian of the Sexta Espada. Prepare to die humans. The ranker said as he drew his sword. I am Shalong, Fratchian of the Sexta Espada. Who might you be? The Espada asked. I am Sir Nighteye, you shall fall today villain. The pro said. I am Lumillion, and I'll save all the people you came here to kill. Introduce one Mirio Tagata. I am best genius. You truly are causing a ruckus. The fourth rank pro said with disdain. Ha. Huh? Who the hell are you? And what's with that ridiculous get up? A blue haired ranker asked. It seems you don't recognize me just like young Akami didn't. Prepare yourself for ranker I am the number one pro hero all might. Number one ha. Huh? Interesting. I am the sex of Espada Grim Jujiju Jackis. The Espada said with a bloodthirsty grin. Every battle started at once. Snap opened fire on the ranker which just bounced off his hero. As he reloaded Eraserhead, Hound Dog, and several clones of Actoplasm engaged the ranker in close combat. To say that the battle was one-sided was an understatement. The Actoplasm clones and Cementus held the ranker in place, while present Mick let out his famous ya. Yeah. Midnight followed up with her quirk, but Dai Roy's Riatsu prevented it from affecting him. Endeavor kept getting pushed back by Edward's physical onslaught, until an orange line surrounded the ranker and exploded. Kasuki Bakugo then flashed in front of the flame hero. You're from UA. What are you doing here boy it's dangerous. Leave now. Endeavor shouted. Not when my attack did more damage than yours did. Kasuki retorted. This statement was proven true when Edward emerged from the smoke with singes all over his body. That was a good attack kid. I can tell there was some significant riatsu behind that. The ranker praised. Face my true power. Awaken, Volcanica. He shouted as he released his research in. Hearing that from an ranker like yourself is quite the confidence booster. Seeing your research in is an even bigger one. Stand up Endeavor. Like it or not you're gonna need my help to beat this guy. Kasuki said. So it would seem. What's your name boy? Kasuki Bakugo. I'll definitely be considering you for an internship then. Now let's go. The pro shouted as flames and explosions littered the streets. Fakum and Emajiki were doing pretty well all things considered. Both sides were pretty roughed up. You humans aren't bad. I expected worse. Nakim said. You aren't too bad yourself. However it's not over not by a long shot. Fatum said as he launched himself at the ranker while Amajiki flanked him. Fatum and Akim both hit each other in the stomach, while Amajiki just a horse leg to kick the ranker in his mask. What surprised everyone involved however was a whooshing sound and a kick that sent the ranker flying a ways away. Are you two alright? Kayaka asked. That was a nice kick young lady, but seeing as you have UA's gym uniform on you shouldn't be here. The pro said as Amajiki nodded in agreement. Well I would normally agree. Trust me on this you guys are gonna need all the help you can get to take down an ranker. She said while blasting sound waves at the disoriented ranker. Even with me helping out I'm not sure we can beat him. She then grabbed Fatum and Amajiki and flashed out of the way of a zero. Okay maybe you have a point. What's in a ranker anyway? The pro asked. It'd take too long to explain. Besides he isn't the only one here, so there's likely to be a debriefing after everything is said and done. Kayaka responded as she launched more sound waves. Bangwaka, Ryukyu, and Ajaya were having some trouble. 
The blonde ranker's research in Del Tor made it difficult fight even worse. Geez, this guy's tough. My shockwaves barely do anything now, Gang Orca said. As he said that the ranker was pushed back by an attack from Maruko. The hell is this guy's deal? The rabbit hero asked. Don't underestimate him, Maruko. He's been fighting all three of us by himself, Ryuki warned. Should really damn my shoulder stayed in bed. She said before getting into a fighting stance with the other heroes following suit. The say Sir Knight I was in a pickle was an understatement. Sholong was faster than anyone he'd had to keep up with before. His attacks combined with Mirio's and Genus were working, but not fast enough. Luckily for them reinforcements had arrived. The ranker was bound with wood before being stomped on by a giant foot. After that the Therms jumped down and pummeled the ranker before jumping back. That was quite the onslaught. You humans are definitely worth my full attention. Awaken, Tijureta. Sholong said as he released his Xanthakudo. This has gotten so much worse. Night I said as he prepared for an even tougher battle. Detroit, smash. All Might shouted as he punched Grimjo. Unfortunately for him the punch only sent him a few feet back. Really? That's all I get from the strongest hero. Pathetic. Now this is a punch you damn pissant. He shouted as he sent All Might flying back. Fortunately for the symbol of peace he was caught by one green haired ranker. I take it as all what didn't pass on my warning. Izuku said. Yungakami I appreciate your assistance, but... All Might I will say this once and only once. If you fight him you will die. Izuku said as he pointed in the direction of Night Eye. Go that way. People who actually need your help are over there. Yungakami I can't just leave you here. All Might when we first met I said I was stronger than you. Izuku said as he approached Grimjo. Listen to Green Hero. You're not worth my time. The Spada said as he threw a punch. A punch that Izuku dodged as he palmed Grimjo's face and threw him much farther than All Might's punch. I was stronger than you then and I'm stronger than you now. Leave. The Emerald Ranker said as he sinitoed after the Espada. Please be careful young Akami. All Might said before dashing in the direction that he was told. Not bad Green, not bad. Dairoi wasn't kidding when he said you were strong. Grimjo said as he popped his neck. You're the six right. How many of you Espadas are there? Izuku said not wasting any time. Straight to the point huh? I can dig that. There are ten of us, not that it should matter to you. After all, you're gonna die here and now. The sexta roared as he rushed towards Izuku. Unfortunately for him Izuku was able to match his rush of attacks blow for blow. The only difference was that Grimjo took far more damage than Izuku did. It's gonna be fun. Grimjo said to himself as he rushed back towards Izuku. Snipe had come to terms with the fact that he might die early on in the battle. With a zero pointed at him, he believed that it was his time to go. A small glacier hitting the enemy ranker shook those thoughts out of his head as he rolled out of the line of fire. The ranker then suffered multiple punches and kicks from Kirishima, Tetsutetsu, Sato, and Iida. All of the students training around UA joined their teachers in the fight. I'll have to scold them later, but for now they're a needed asset to this fight. Snap thought as he fired several more bullets at the ranker. Damn weaklings keep popping up out of nowhere. Dairoi grumbled as he was hit with another wave of ice. Kaminari then hopped on his shoulders and released 1.3 million volts right into a ranker, before being pulled out of harm's way by Dark Shadow. He began to draw his sword, but was stopped by Cementus, Todoroki, and Shiozaki. After taking several more hits from the likes of Ashido, Aoyama, Yuraka, Snipe and Present Mick, Azaltwood jumped over him and wrapped his capture scarf around the ranker's head. With the help of Hound Dog, Sado, and Kendo, the racer hero was able to snap the ranker's neck killing him. Mr. Zawa did you just eat a set in complete shock towards what his teacher just did? I did eat it. The Kami was right the only way to bring these guys down is to kill them. Even if we could bring them in their powers aren't quirks, so we have no way of containing them. As always said knowing damn well that he owed Izuku an apology. Not quirks. What do you mean by that Shota? Mick inquired. If they had quirks then my quirk would have worked, but it didn't. That's something else Akami needs to explain. The battle between Endeavor, Kasuki and Edred was going differently. Both sides were heavily damaged, but Edward seemingly had more stamina. You two have done well. Your strength and tenacity are praiseworthy. However it's time to die. Edward said as he aimed a punch at the two humans. You're right about one thing someone's gonna die, but it ain't gonna be us. Kasuki shouted as he used an explosion to redirect Edward's punch. Stand up Endeavor. He shouted as both he and the number two hero put their hands on Edward's face. Kasuki unleashed the strongest explosion he could muster, while Endeavor let out a torrent of blue flames which killed the ranker. The two humans then fell on their back and basked in their victory. Damn it. This guy's tough. Fatum grunted as he was sent flying back. We're gonna die. Amajiki said solemnly. I hate to break it to you, but I'm not. Someone important to me ordered me not to die, and I have every intention of following through with that order. Kayaka said as an image of Izuku flashed through her mind. So here's the plan. What's taking them so long? Are they dead? I really hope so. Nakim said right as Fatum and Amajiki rushed towards him. 
Rather than attacking the ranker however they just held him in place, while Kayaka flashed onto his shoulders and inserted her jacks into his head. The flood of sound waves caused his head to explode. Fatum and Amajiki had already realized that he needed to die so they weren't too upset. Bayukyu and Hado had been taken out of the fight. Thankfully Ilford had been worn down enough that Gang Orca and Muruko could hold their own. Yeesh what the fuck is this guy? An irritated Muruko asked. No idea. Hopefully someone knows. Gang Orca said before rushing towards the ranker. The Orsonus user grabbed the blonde's horns and hit him with a shockwave, before throwing Ilfer to Maruko, who hit him with a barrage of kicks. Then out of nowhere a wave of energy hit the downed ranker and shattered his researching. The giant lizard-like tail then crashed down killing the ranker. Hado and Ryukyu had powered through their injuries to save their comrades. As heroes should. Detroit, smash. All Might cried out as he prevented Shalong from killing Nighteye. All Might the clairvoyant said in shock. I'm sorry Nighteye. It's been a long time hasn't it? But do not fear for I am here. However unlike usual All Might was not smiling. Just as Shalom got up he was stomped back down by Mount Lady. Deetherms then grabbed him and threw him into the air where he was captured by Kamui Woods. All Might took the chance and hit the Ranker with a rush of punches that shattered his research and before using one final punch to kill him. All Might always regretted the loss of life, but he knew that sometimes it was necessary. The number one hero gathered up all the injured heroes from all the battlefields and took them to Recovery Girl. Every battlefield except one. You're not bad. Using your own zero to reduce the damage from mine is quite impressive. However it's over Espada. Izuku said as he charged another zero. However he was interrupted by a yellow light covering Grimjo. TCH, negation ha. We'll settle this another time. You're dead the next time I see you green. You hear me? Dead. The sex roared out as he was taken back to Hueco Mundo. Izuku ignored the threats and sensed that everyone was taken to UA for plot convenience. He made his way to the school infirmary in a half hour and walked in on an interesting sight. These students acted incredibly reckless and could have gotten yourselves killed. I should have you all arrested. Police Chief Namasa said in a harsh tone. Yes please continue reprimanding them for saving the heroes lives. That'll totally teach them their lesson. Izuku said sarcastically as he walked into the infirmary. Don't get me started on you Izuku Akami. All Might told me how you fought one of these people alone. You weren't off the hook either. The dog had a chief growled. Yay, yay sure whatever. I'm sure all of you wanna know who you just fought am I right? Izuku said completely disregarding Namasa's threat. Once he received nods from everyone he gave his explanation. Long story short all of you are too weak to fight rankers on your own. Yeah we figured that out kid. No need to rub it in. Maruko said. But hey at least we took out one of their big guns right. Seeing as you fought one of these Espada guys right Akami. Kirishima pointed out. Nah he got away. Use a technique called negation. It basically isolates the target from the dimension they're in. Even if there was three of me it still wouldn't be broken. Izuku said lazily. So everyone contributed to defeating an Aranker except you. Endeavor said accusingly. Unfortunately Izuku took exception to that. Don't get cocky Enji Todoroki. I'm well aware of who you and how you do things, and you're the furthest thing from a hero. I refuse to be lectured by scum like you. Do I make myself clear? Izuku said as he raised his Riatsu too well above Vedra's Riatsu in his researching. Endeavor just nodded his head without saying a word. Anyways with one of these spotted down for the count the rankers aren't gonna be making any moves anytime soon. So the sports festival isn't in danger from that side of things. Izuku said which lightened the mood. He then brought the mood back down. However as I said you're all too weak. So after the UA finals everyone from class 1 and 1B as well as every pro currently present. Yes that means you all might as well as any other pros who want a fighting chance will be training under me. No exceptions. Questions. No. Good. I'm gonna go take a nap. Izuku said as he walked out of the room. Their victory today was pure luck. Izuku wasn't about to take any chances. Especially since for the first time in a long time he wasn't alone. Chapter 7. The sports festival the sports festival was finally here. Everyone seemed to be excited for the event. Well everyone except Izuku who just wanted to take a nap. Midnight began giving a speech that Izuku wasn't really paying attention to until he heard his name come up. And now for a word from your class representative Izuku Kami. The R-rated hero said cheerfully. I'm sorry come again, was all Izuku could say since he had no idea how he became the representative for the entire first year class. After a lot of pushing and snickering from Kayaka and Kasuki, Izuku finally made his way to the podium. Ahem. Oh yeah, this whole public speaking thing is new to me so, a best of luck to everyone I guess. Izuku said which caused Kayaka and Kasuki to go from snickering to full on laughter. Izuku grimaced and looked at Midnight. Who exactly thought having me do this would be a good idea? Unfortunately for him the mic picked up what he said which caused every other student to start laughing too. Izuku just sighed and walked back down with his class. Hahaha <laughs> nice speech Izuku. PFT, hahaha. <laughs> Kasuki laughed out. Yeah way to go dude. 
Best speech of ha 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 I can't say it with a straight face. Kayaka added. I just want to take a nap. Izuku groaned out. Midnight then explained that the first event in the sports festival would be an obstacle course. Once she explained the rules everyone made their way to the starting line. While they were waiting Izuku was approached by Todoroki. Do you know what court marriages are? He asked Izuku. I read about them briefly so I understand the gist of it. Why? The ranker asked. I was the product of a court marriage between my father Endeavor and my mother. He was abusive and drove my mother to the brink of madness. One day she said she couldn't stand my left side and poured boiling water on my face. The youngest Todoroki said has his hand covered his scar. Why are you telling me this? You clearly don't like me so what do you get from this? Izuku asked very confusedly. I'm telling you this as a declaration of war. I will beat you, and I will do it without my father's quirk. He said as he walked away. The starting bell rang, and Todoroki froze everyone in place as he made his way ahead. Well everyone except Izuku had used Sunido to make it past the ice and zero pointers. In two more bursts of Sunido he had cleared the obstacle course with a time of 0.47. This of course shocked everyone except Kasuki and Kayaka who focused on catching up and making good time. Izuku took a nice half hour nap as he waited for everyone to finish. In the end the results of the top 5 were as follows. Izuku first, Kasuki second, Todoroki third, Iida fourth, Kayaka fifth. Once everyone had finished midnight revealed that the second event would be a cavalry battle. She explained that directly attacking and making your opponents fall would result in disqualification. After explaining the rules she went over how many points people would have. And last, but certainly not least. First place will have 10 million points. She announced. I'm sorry come again. Izuku said as everyone looked at him with hungry animalistic eyes. Izuku couldn't help but think that the school's math was just a tad bit off. The team making process starts now. Midnight shouted as everyone began forming teams. Sorry Izuku, but this is our chance to see how we stack up after fighting our anchors for real. Kasuki said as he made his way to his team. Yeah, no offense, but you're a challenge we want to see if we can overcome. Kayaka agreed. None taken. Best of luck to the both of you. Izuku said as he scanned around to see who was left to team up with. You and Mikami. The way you want to be on a team together. Yuraka asked still slightly nervous around the ranker. As much as I'd appreciate it, there's still time to look for another team if you're not comfortable around me. Izuku said acutely aware of the reason for her stutter. No? I mean you're still my classmate, so I need to get used to being around you. So why not start now? The brunette said while looking down nervously. That's a fair point. Welcome aboard Ms. Yuraka. Izuku said as he put his hand out gesturing for a handshake. Yuraka smiled and shook his hand. Thanks for having me Mr. Akami. The girl said excitedly. I hope there's more room on this team of yours. Working with the obstacle races number one will be a good chance to show off my babies. Said a pink haired girl with gadgets and goggles. The more the merrier they say. Your name is. Izuku greeted. They had soon, I'm from the support course. Which means all of my babies are cleared for use. The girl said excitedly. Sounds good to me. Izuku said as he shook her hand. I hope you have room for me as well. I would like to apologize for the darkness of ignorance clouding my judgment of you. Tokoyami said as he approached the group. I appreciate the maturity Tokoyami. Not everyone can admit something like that. In that way you're leaps ahead of the other students. Izuku said as he stuck his hand out. Tokoyami looked a little shocked at the ranker's praise before smiling and shaking his hand. I will not let you down. I sure hope not cause you're going on top. Izuku said which surprised everyone. You I don't mean to question your choice, B but shouldn't you be on top? Yuraka asked with the other two nodding in agreement. My offense is limited to close range, seeing as no one here is really capable of dodging my Siro or Bola. So Tokoyami will have an advantage in his attack range. Besides my Sunido will be far more useful in terms of getting us out of a sticky situation. With the addition of you being able to make the rest of the team weightless, my speed won't be dampened in this slightest. Izuku said as everyone nodded in understanding. So Tokoyami was on top with Izuku in the front and Yuraka and Hatsume in the back. Yuraka take the weight from all three of you right as the cavalry battle starts. H-A. W-Y. Call it a hunch. The brunette didn't quite understand, but agreed nonetheless. Midnight started the countdown shortly after. And start. The pro shouted. Yuraka immediately removed the weight of herself and her human teammates. Izuku proceeded to use Sunido to dodge a wave of ice, an explosion, and some sound waves among other attacks. I now understand why you wanted me to do that. Yuraka said slightly shocked by the high-speed movement. Yep they're all gunning for us. Everyone else is secondary. Izuku said as they dodged the individual attacks at a regular speed. Ha. Huh. What's this? It seems Akami can only use his high-speed movement for a short period of time. Manama said as his team made a run towards Izuku and his team. Is that what you think? Guess I'll have to prove you wrong. Everyone get ready for a wild ride. 
Izuku said as Yuraka made the team weightless before the entire team held on for dear life. Izuku then sunidoed around the entire field leaving after images in his wake. Everyone excluding Katsuki and Kayaka were shocked by the extreme display of speed. Katsuki continued to garner points while Kayaka tried to snap her team out of their stupor. The cavalry battle ended with Team Tokoyami in first, Team Bakugo in second, Team Todoroki in third, and Team Shinso in fourth. The next round would be tournament-style battle. The first matchups would be as such. Shinso vs. Izuku, Siro vs. Todoroki, Hardboy 1 vs. Hardboy 2, I mean Kirishima vs. Tetsutetsu, Yoi Rozu vs. Tokoyami, Iida vs. Hatsum, Yuraka vs. Bakugo, Ashido vs. Aoyama, and Kaminari vs. Shiozaki. Akami. Ajiro called out. Hmm. How can I help you? The ranker replied as he turned to face his classmate. Shinso has a brainwashing quirk. It takes effect if you answer him once he speaks to you. It was the reason I dropped out, I didn't feel like I deserved to continue. Ajiro said as he looked down. Thanks for the info. I'll put it to good use. And raise your head. Izuku said as Ajiro looked up in shock. You have a level of maturity that's rare for kids our age. You may have lost this time, but take pride in that fact and move forward. To ensure that next time, you can succeed. The ranker continued as he made his way towards the ring. Once the battle started Shinso began to speak. That high-speed movement is really something. It must be nice to have such a convenient coup Izuku proceeded to cut him off. Given what your quirk is I can't say I'm surprised that you didn't make it in. Despite its usefulness brainwashing doesn't really work on robots does it? So if the tools themselves don't stack up well against a particular adversary, it's up to the user of those tools to make up for their disadvantage with the wisdom they possess is it not? Your quirk is formidable, but it will not always be useful. So Hitashi Shinso. Show me your strength, your wisdom, your resolve to surpass your limitations. Izuku said as he walked up and stood a mere three feet from his opponent. Fight me. If that's what you want. Shinso said as he threw a series of punches that Izuku was easily able to dodge. You're telegraphing. I can see your attacks from kilometers away. Make yourself unpredictable. Izuku said as he started throwing his own attacks will be soft enough to not send him flying. Shinso dodged and blocked what he could, but still took some heavy hits. Your guard is too open. Tighten it, leave as few openings as possible. Your dodging is too late as well. You need to learn to dodge and cinch with your opponent's attacks. Learn and predict so you can dodge and counter-attack faster. The ranker continued as he blocked some of Shinso's attacks before dropping him with a leg sweep. However you must also be able to expect the unexpected. Or Izuku said as he stomped down only for Shinso to roll out of the way. Adapt and recompose yourself quickly once you've been caught off guard. He said with a barely nauticable smirk. He's teaching him. Present Mick said in slight shock. Yay, but that's not all. Shinso is picking up the lessons remarkably well. As Awa added. To be able to learn and adapt is a key trait of a hero. However the two students doing battle were not paying attention to the play-by-play. -play. Their minds were only focused on their battle. Izuku was teaching him to up his chances of entering the hero course. Shinso was learning as best he could so as not to disappoint the ranker who had faith in him when others had not. Izuku however, had much more stamina than Shinso. So the purple-haired boy fell on his back and was unable to get up. Do you concede? Izuku asked simply. I do. Sorry. The Gen Ed boy stated slightly disappointed. Don't apologize. You did remarkably well. Arguably better than some of my classmates would be able to achieve. Take pride in your accomplishment and work harder to do better in your next challenge. Izuku said as he extended his hand towards his downed opponent. Shinso accepted and stood up to face his opponent. Thank you. I won't let you down. Shinso. This may be from my own personal bias. But I think you can be a hero. Izuku said as the entire stadium went silent with that declaration. I may not know what it takes, but what you have shown me is something that can make or break a hero. I wish you luck. The ranker said as he walked back to his class. Shinso could only stand in shock before smiling and walking back to the gen ed section with even more determination than before. What surprised him even more and brought a smile to Izuku's face was what his classmate said. You go Shinso. Way to go man. You're the pride of the general lad department. Were some of the things his classmates cheered on. Kasuki and Kayaka approached the ranker, as the rest of class 1A and 1B looked at him in shock. Man leave it to you, to train your opponent. Kasuki said as he fist bumped his childhood friend. You're as good a teacher as ever dude. Kayaka said with a quick hug. What can I say? The kid's gonna go places. I just gave him a push in the right direction. Izuku said as his two friends teased him for his humility. The classmates who shunned him and treated him like a monster could only feel disappointed in themselves. The next match ended quickly. Siro didn't stand a chance as Todoroki launched a glacier that eclipsed half the stadium at the boy. Ishai was hoping to lead by example. Izuku deadpanned, not even phased by the glacier. But it seems that boy's as ruthless as ever. The next battle was over just as quickly. 
Kaminari's indiscriminate shock was blocked by Shizaki's vines. The vine-headed Christian then proceeded to throw the blonde out of the ring. The next battle was Yuraka vs. Bakugo. She's a good kid Katsuki. Don't kill her. Izuku said. Of course not. What do you take me for? Katsuki retorted. Well you do have a tendency to get a little bloodthirsty when you fight. Kayaka pointed out. TCH whatever that's different. He said as he walked down to the stadium. Once they were face to face Yuraka spoke up first. Don't you dare go easy on me. She demanded. Though I really seem like the type to go easy on someone round face. Kasuki said as he slipped into a fighting stance. Once the battle started the blonde Riatsu user launched a straightforward explosion that Yuraka was surprisingly able to dodge. However once she got close enough to touch him she was blown away. The crowd seemed to take exception to that and started booing. Yuraka however got back up. That's not enough to stop me. She said in between pants. I'd be disappointed otherwise. Kasuki replied as he beckoned her to attack again. An attack she did, over and over and over again. Then Yuraka put her hands together, and Kasuki noticed the rubble above him. Not a bad plan round face. Unfortunately for you. Kasuki blew up the rubble. It wouldn't work on me. Yuraka was not deterred however, as she ran around the smoke trying to conceal her presence. Kasuki noticed her however, and sent an explosion towards her. Except it wasn't her. It was her jacket. I've got you now. She shouted as she reached out to touch him. Unfortunately she was blown back once again. The crowd's booze intensified and Katsuki finally snapped. All of you shut your damn mouths. You think I haven't been trying to send her out of the ring I've done everything I can short of killing her because she's an opponent worthy of that. You call yourselves pros yet you can't even recognize the worth of a girl doing her damnedest to prove herself. Bakugo's right. How long have you lot been pros? Yuraka was able to push Bakugo into using his full force because she's tough enough to take it. You're all a disgrace. As all were joined in. Yuraka however couldn't get up anymore. Kasuki was announced as the winner, and Yuraka was taken to Recovery Girl. The next match which was Kirishima vs Tetsutetsu ended in a tie. Ashido triumphed over Aoyama, and Tokoyami pushed Yoi Rozu out of bounds. After waking up Kirishima and Tetsutetsu had an arm wrestle which Kirishima won. The second round of the tournament had begun. Iida was able to push Shiazaki out of bounds, making the match end quickly. Ashido was quickly overpowered by Dark Shadow giving Tokoyami the win. Kirishima held his own against Bakugo for a while, but Bakugo was able to whittle down Kirishima's stamina, enough to give him the win. Now it was the battle everyone was looking forward to. Todoroki vs Akami. Todoroki glared at Izuku while the rancor just yawned. The battle started and Todoroki sent a wave of ice that Izuku dodged easily. This song and dance again huh? Izuku said as he dodged wave after wave of ice. Shut up. Todoroki said as he sent the stadium eclipsing glacier and caught Izuku in it. Midnight was about to call the match before Izuku shattered the glacier with his Riatsu. You can't win. Not without using your full power. Izuku said nonchalantly. I told you I refuse to use my father's power. He said as the waves of ice got progressively slower. Then don't use your father's power. Izuku said confusing Todoroki. Use your power. If I recall correctly quirks are biological right. So unless your piss poor excuse of a father can somehow control your flames, then the power isn't his. It's yours. Izuku used Sunido to get close to Todoroki. And as I said you can't win without using all of it. Izuku was about to throw Todoroki out of the ring before Sunido in a way to dodge a burst of fire. I can't believe you'd help give your opponent an advantage. What can I say? Gotta make it challenging somehow. Izuku said with a small smile that Todoroki matched. Todoroki charged up his ice and his flames, while Izuku just extended his hand. Akami. Thank you. Todoroki said as he launched his glacier once more which Izuku destroyed using several weakened balls. Izuku then jumped back to avoid the torrent of flames that came his way. However he jumped a little too far back. The kami is out of bounds. The winner is Todoroki. Midnight shouted causing Izuku to go a little pale. Shit. I'm too used to dodging Siros. Izuku said as he noticed a familiar feeling from Todoroki. He walked up to Todoroki and shook his hand. Good fight Todoroki. You got me good. Also welcome to the pack. He said which confused the boy until Izuku pointed to his chest where half red half white wolf tattoo had appeared. Izuku the showed the one on the back of his hand as he walked away. For the first time in a long while Shadow Todoroki smiled earnestly, glad to be a part of it. He said softly as he followed his classmate. Once he walked back from Recovery Girl's office he was stopped by Kasuki and Jiro. Did I do something? Todoroki said incredibly confused. Nah, just welcoming you to the pack is all. Kayaka said as she lifted up the hem of her shirt to show a purple wolf just above her hip, and Kasuki showed the orange tattoo on his shoulder. Ah thank you. Todoroki said as he showed the tattoo on his chest. The three then walked back to see Izuku taking a nap. Kasuki made his way down to the stage along with Tokoyami for their match. The light caused by Kasuki's explosions gave him the win. 
Todoroki frozied his engines and won his match as well. Todoroki used both sides of his cork against Kasuki, who used his Riatsu which gave him the edge in the victory. The top three were all given a medal except Iida who left due to a family emergency. The next day the students were given their internship options. Izuku chose Muruko, Yuraka picked Gunhead, Iida chose Manual, Kasuki, and Todoroki chose Endeavor, and Kayaga picked a rather unknown hero, who also had a sound base quirk that operated in Hosu. Iida however had a dark look in his eye which Izuku noticed. Hey Kayaka, you gonna be in Hosu right? Izuku said. B.A.Y.? The confused Kayaka asked. I want you to keep an eye on Iida. It's no coincidence that he's going to Hosu after his brother was attacked by the hero killer. Izuku warned. Should you write? I'll do my best to keep him out of trouble. The punk girl said. I appreciate it. Now I'm gonna take a nap. Izuku was really hoping Iida wouldn't do anything stupid. Chapter 8. Hosu Izuku was most definitely not a morning person. Waking up early for the first day of his internship brought down his mood and made him miss most of what is always said. All he picked up was something about not wearing his hero costume unless he was with his designated pro. He gave Kayaka a look that was an unnecessary reminder to watch out for Iida, which she responded to with a nod. Once he got to Moriko's agency he saw that the number 5 pro was waiting for him right at the entrance. Hey kid. You ready to get started with training? She said excitedly. Training? Izuku asked. He then heard the interns whispering about how Moriko's training usually broke interns down. Yup, you said that even we pros needed to get stronger, so I thought I'd get ahead of the game. Moriko said with a smile. Her interns and sidekicks stayed silent for 5 solid seconds before letting out a massive what, before questioning why a pro would train under a student. You guys weren't there so I don't expect you to get it. The pro said as her tone and expression turned serious. Back before the sports festival I worked together with Gang Warka, Ryukyu, and one of UA's big three. All of us to take down one enemy, and even then it was a bitch and a half. This kid took on the strongest one by himself and was barely hurt. This caused her interns to look at the lethargic ranker with awe. They could hardly believe he took on someone stronger than an enemy that took three top ten pros, and one of UA's big three. By himself no less. Alright I guess I can give you a head start. You have anywhere in mind to get this started. Izuku said ignoring the looks he got from the interns. Yup we got a pretty nice gym here. Lots of space there. The rabbit hero said with her smile returning. Lead the way. Izuku said as the two made their way to the gym. Once their Muruko started bouncing on the balls of her feet. Alright teach what's up first. The pro said excitedly. First is Riatsu control. The task you're gonna be performing that will demonstrate your control is quite simple. Izuku said with a tiny glint of mischief in his eye. I guess I can't really complain. You gotta start with the basics after all. So what's this simple task of yours? She said as she mellowed out a little after hearing the word control. Muruko and Izuku both noticed her intern standing around to observe the training that even an experienced pro needs. Standing. Izuku said as he used his Riatsu to send his student crashing to the ground. What the hell? The pro cried out as she was held down by what seemed like an increase in gravity. This pressure is from the weight of my Riatsu. I'm not using my full force obviously. What you need to do is learn to control and focus your Riatsu, so that you'll be able to withstand my own. Izuku explained as if it was the simplest thing in the world. Which to him it was seeing as his abilities and Riatsu control are all instinctual. How the fuck am I even supposed to get this Riatsu shit? Muruko cried indignantly. You already have it. Quirks are byproduct of centuries upon centuries of Riatsu descending upon humanity. The method of drawing it out varies from person to person, so I can't really tell you how to do it, just that it's what you need to do. Izuku explained. Well how do you do it? The older woman asked as she tried to push herself up. It's instinctual. We hollas know how to use our powers because of our instincts. We know that if we don't use these abilities we'll die, so we use them. Not really helpful for you I'm afraid. Izuku stated nonchalantly. Clearly. Fucking hell this shit's heavy. Muruko said as she continued trying to figure out how to draw out a Riatsu. She had a Luong day ahead of her. Like Muruko, Endeavor greeted his two interns at the door. Shoto. Bakugo. He said simply. Shoto just nodded while Bakugo said the hero's name in response. The number two pros started walking signaling the two students to follow. Bakugo. That villain said your explosion had a significant amount of something behind it. I assume it's something that green haired boy taught you. That's right. I'm still proud of it too. The blonde explosion user responded. Shoto was just confused and didn't understand what they were talking about. You're going to teach Shoto and I how to obtain this power. The number two hero said as if it was the simplest thing in the world. No can do. Kasuki said. Why not? Endeavor said as he was more than a little upset that he was told no. Shoto however was quite happy to see someone refuse his old man. I don't have enough knowledge on the subject to teach you in any way, other than repeating what I was told when Izuku taught me. 
On top of that I have no means of getting to the place we went to when he trained me, and believe me when I say learning it there is much easier than learning it here. You'll just have to wait for Izuku I'm afraid. Kasuki said knowing that even if the number 2 pro tried to force him to do something he could hold his own. Shoto maintained his stoic demeanor, but was laughing his ass off at his father's pissed off expression. TCH very well. Come along, we will still be training. If we cannot learn what that boy taught you then we will improve ourselves the old fashioned way. Endeavor said as he continued to make his way towards the gym. Kasuki rolled his eyes and followed alongside Shoto. Kayaka's mentor was a lot shorter than she would have expected. Koichi hears her rather echoes, seemed quite excited to have an intern with a sound bass quirk. After rambling on for a little bit the hero asked something that caught her attention. Now Ms. Jiro what is the real reason you chose to intern with me? Echoes asked with his smile not once leaving his face. Like I said what better to learn about sound quirks than to intern with a pro who has a sound quirk? Kayaka responded. Hmm, but you have another goal in my right. Echoes said as Kayaka's eyes widen in surprise. Yay. One of my classmates has a family member who was attacked by the hero killer. A good friend of mine noticed a look in his eyes that wasn't exactly positive and asked me to keep an eye on him, just in case he did something stupid, since my internship was also in Hosu. Kayaka admitted as she looked down. Hum I see. Perhaps we'll get lucky and run into your classmate. If we're lucky his pro will agree to working together. Echo said as his intern looked up in shock. You do that? She asked incredulously. Of course, vengeance isn't a path and up, and coming heroes should walk after all. The pro responded. Thank you. Kayaka said softly as her posture relaxed just a little bit. Little did everyone know Iida was constantly on the lookout for the hero killer. Manuel was unfortunately oblivious to his intern's intent and congratulated him on his diligence. The next few days were uneventful for most. The only notable changes were that Maruko had gotten the hang of Riatsu control, standing on air, and high-speed movement, while Shoto was able to improve his control over his flames. Unfortunately today was the day everything came crashing down. What the fuck are these things? Murko asked incredulously as Naomis popped up left and right in multiple areas. I think that one kid with the anger issues called them Naomis. It seems the kid was quite upset that his little posse didn't get any fame from the USJ incident. Izuku said as he fired several ballers that took down an equal number of Naomis. Great. More problems. As if evil spirits and overpowered villains weren't enough. How the hell are you firing those things anyway? The rabbit hero complained. Compression of Riatsu into a spherical shape that is then fired off at high speeds. I present to you the bala. Izuku said sarcastically. I'll just pretend I know how to do that and I'm choosing not to. Maruku said as she dodged an attack from a regenerative Naomu. Super regeneration. Fan fucking tastic. Izuku proceeded to pull the pro out of the way and fired off a zero at the black Naomu. You can't regenerate if there's nothing left. True. Unfortunately we have more of these ugly pains in the ass to deal with. She said as Izuku just groaned in response. The fiery trio were having just as much fun, if not a little more. Endeavor roasted Naomu after Naomu, only having to step it up when facing ones that had super regeneration. Shoto constantly switched off between ice and fire to maximize his quirk usage. The ones frozen by Shoto ended up in pieces courtest of Kasuki's explosions. God fucking damn it there's no end to these fuckers. Kasuki swore as he blew up another group of the artificial humans. The pro and his son were both too busy to verbalize an agreement, but both of them mentally agreed that the blonde was right. Kayaka, Echoes, and Manuel had dealt with the Naomis in their area, and were about to help out other pros, when Kayaka noticed someone was missing. Fuck. Echoes, Eid is missing. He probably went after the hero killer. Kayaka swore. Go after him Ms. Jiro, you show me how fast you can be, and you're the only one that can catch up to him. Echoes said confidently. Echoes you can't be serious. Manuel protested. Manuel that young lady is stronger and faster than you and I put together. If anyone can save Ingenium's brother it's her. Echo said as Kayaka flashed away and looked for Ida. When she found him however he was in worse condition than she would have liked. He was on the ground bleeding with the hero killer standing over him ready to deal the final blow. Thankfully her high speed movement allowed her to kick the villain off him. Jiro. What are you doing here? You need to run. Ida shouted. That's rich coming from the guy on the ground bleeding. You're lucky Izuku told me to keep an eye on you otherwise you'd be dead. She retorted. Akami. How'd he? Ida questioned thinking that he masked his intentions quite well. Your guess is as good as mine. He told me he didn't like the look in your eyes, and inferred that you picking a Hosu internship after your brother was attacked by the hero killer was no coincidence. Clearly he was right. Kayaka said as Iida wondered just how intelligent Izuku actually was to discern all that just from his eyes. I see. You and that boy who told you to watch out for your friend are true heroes in the making. I will not kill you. However that boy and that hero behind you are fakes that must die. Stain said as he prepared to strike. Yay, yay, whatever. Bring it on or are you scared of a high school girl? Kayaka taunted. Taunts will get you nowhere. 
Stane shouted as he attacked only for the girl to dodge each attack and counter with her own. She's good. Unfortunately for her all I need is a single drop of blood. Stane thought. You're pretty fast young lady. Now you're just slow. The guys I train with are way faster than this. Come to think of it. The earphone Jack user said with a smirk as she flashed behind him and kicked him into the wall. So am I. Amazing. Jiro moved just like a kami. Does that mean it's something that can be learned? The engine user thought to himself. Unfortunately Stain got enough blood from a small cut that he was able to lick which paralyzed Kayaka. Damn. How'd he get me? She thought before noticing a small cut on her wrist. He has to take in someone's blood. Damn it. However before Stain could finish off Iida, a pillar of flames engulfed the alley. Shoto Todoroki had joined the battle. Todoroki you too. How'd you get here? Iida protested. Jiro sent me her coordinates. And nothing else. You're lucky I was with Bakugo otherwise I wouldn't have known what it meant. The stoic boy said. Not that I'm complaining, but why are you here and Katsuki isn't? Kayaka asked. He's helping my shitty old man with an amus. He said something about not sensing anything too threatening so he sent me. Shoto said slightly offended. Watch yourself Shoto if this guy drinks your blood you get paralyzed. Kayaka said. Right. The half called half hot user said as he alternated between ice and fire to keep Stain at bay. Kayaka was able to overcome the paralysis by forcing Riatsu through her body. Stain might have been slower than Kayaka, but he made up for it with experience. Unfortunately their fight was cut short by an unwelcome guest. You have quite a significant amount of Riatsu girl. Said a dark skinned ranker. Stain looked at him curiously, while Shoto and Iida who had been freed from Stain's quirk, got ready to fight. Kayaka however was downright terrified. Run. She said which caused everyone even Stain to look at her with a confused look. She looked at them angrily. What the fuck are you guys waiting for? Didn't you hear me if you stay here you'll die now run. The young girl shouted. Jiro we can help you. Iida said. If you think I can't handle one opponent then you underestimate me. The hero killer said calmly. Kayaka gave a frustrated sigh before looking at the ranker. What number are you, Espada? The Riatsu user asked. I am the Satima Espada Zumari Rurax. The newly named Espada stated. What is your name girl? Asking the name of a dead girl seems pointless, but I appreciate the courtesy. I'm Kayaka Jiro. The girl said sadly. Jiro. Why are you giving up we can take him? Iida said angrily. You saved me so why are you talking like you're already dead? Because she knows something we do not. That's the only explanation. Stain hypothesized. So what do you know Kayaka Jiro? Remember I told you about the guys I trained with. One of them is an ranker just like him. Like this guy he's insanely strong. Stronger than all of the top 10 heroes put together if he got serious. Kayaka said. Jiro, no, Kayaka how strong is this guy in terms we can understand? Shoto asked. He could cut down All Might before he knew what hit him. The girl responded. I do not know who this All Might is, but that is likely correct. Out of all of the Espada, my Sunido is the fastest. So I ask you, will you fight or will you run? Zamari asked as he drew his sword. I'll fight and I'll die. I gotta give these guys at least a small chance at living. Kayaka said as she flashed to the Espada's left side and launched sound waves which he avoided before appearing behind her. He then proceeded to slash her across the back. Before she hit the ground however a familiar figure caught her. Sorry I couldn't do much Izuku. Kayaka said weakly. You did great Kayaka, you were a true hero today. The Emerald Aranka responded softly as their classmates approached. Shoto can you hold her for me? Of course Izuku, she's one of our pack. You pack. We have to look out for each other. The half called half hot user said with a small smile. Well said Birdroki. Kayaka chuckled. Kid. From your speed I can tell you are one of the ones this girl trained with. Stain said. I am. And you are the hero killer. Izuku responded. I am. If possible I would like to observe this fight. I want to see the level of power that terrified the girl who gave me a run for my money. Will you allow this? The hero killer asked. You can't seriously think Iida began. I'll allow it on one condition. Stop killing heroes and work with me to face a threat far worse than the stagnation of heroes. Izuku said shocking everyone. I take it you refer to these things. Stain said. I do. Izuku said simply. I will help you fight, but I will not give up on my mission. The hero killer said as Izuku reluctantly agreed. He gave Kayaka a small and quick kiss on her cheek, causing her to blush. Kayaka raise your Riatsu as high as you can. Trust me you'll need it. Alright. The blushing mess of a girl said as she brought a Riatsu up covering the two students and the hero killer as well. Izuku then sunidoed in front of the Satima Espada. Are you ready to fight Green? Zumari asked. It won't be a fight. You hurt someone very important to me. I can honestly say that I've never been so livid in life or in death. Izuku said calmly which caused Kayaka to blush even more knowing that she was so important to the ranker she had fallen for. I see. Then we shall do battle in the name of your vengeance then. The Espada said as he pointed his sword at his green-haired opponent. 
Izuku then drew his own sword which caused Kayaka to gasp in shock. Kasuki, Endeavor, and Muriko appeared just as Izuku drew his sword. Izuku drew his sword. Kasuki said in shock. What's the significance of drawing his sword? Endeavor confusedly asked. Cause he normally doesn't need it. Muriko answered. The three go over to where Kayaka is. Kasuki, Muriko, raise your Riatsu as high as it can go. Izuku commanded. The three did as they were told. You said you were ready to do battle wasn't that right Espada? How unfortunate for you. This won't be a battle, this will be a slaughter. Kick about, Los Lobos. Izuku said as his Riatsu sword. What the hell is this? Stain shouted. This is Izuku's true power. Just like before the sports festival. Kasuki started. His researching. The sword release of an Aranker that unleashes their full power. I honestly never thought I'd see Izuku's. Kayaka continued. Izuku emerged from the smoke and Riatsu with a mask fragment over one of his eyes, a pale green coat with black tights and boots, and dark green fur covering his forearms and shins. In his hands were two black pistols. Zumari was paralyzed with fear. Siro met Roletta. Izuku said as he pointed one pistol towards the Espada. He pulled the trigger and fired a barrage of Siro's that Kayaka and Kasuki didn't think was possible. What? The? Fuck. Kayaka, Kasuki, and Muruko said respectively. I didn't know Siro's could be fired that fast. Muruko said. None of us did. Kayaka responded. I didn't know they could be fired at all. Stain mumbled. The Espada was able to dodge remarkably well all things considered, but he was eventually was overwhelmed. Once the smoke cleared was barely standing and bleeding heavily. Such power. Very well. I will show you my own researching. The Espada said with labored breathing. Quell he was cut off by a Siro from behind as Izuku snidoed behind him. As I said this will be a slaughter. Which implies that you won't be fighting back. The Emerald Aranker said. Izuku kicked the Espada into the air and utilized Siro Metroletta once more, which turned Zamari into nothing more than dust. I see. I think I understand now. The gap between us. Stain said as Izuku returned to ground level and released his resurrection. You're quite the quick learner hero killer. Izuku said as he sensed Stain's Riatsu. It seemed the villain had natural talent when it came to Riatsu. Grow stronger. I may not agree with what you do, but we'll need all the help we can get. Especially if the Primera is who I think it is. I will. I wish you and your compatriots the best, Aranker. Stain said as he flashed away surprising everyone. The police arrived shortly after with more pros, and Kayaka and Iida were taken to the hospital. Izuku, Kasuki, Shado, Endeavor, and Muriko were all in the room waiting when Chief Namasa, Manuel, and Echoes walked in. Endeavor. Muriko. Akami. He said with a tone of distaste on Izuku's name. You kids seem to enjoy getting into trouble. Judging from the giant pillars of blue in the air, I hope something good came of two UA students being severely injured. The seventh Espada is no more. So they're one down. Izuku said. I suppose that is good news. I will have to scold those who face the hero killer however, so if all of you not involved would please leave the room. The chief requested. No one argued and they left the room. Muruko and Endeavor returned to their agencies while Izuku and Katsuki waited outside the room. You like her? Katsuki teased with a smile. I do. Izuku said with a soft smile of his own. Man I liked it better when you got annoyed when I pointed it out. Katsuki joked. I guess I've finally gotten used to you again. Izuku said as Namasa, Echoes, and Manuel exited the room, signaling they could go back in. Once they went inside Kayaka was covering her blushing face with her hands, while Iida and Shoto both looked at Izuku. She heard you. They said in unison. Izuku nodded and sat next to the punk girl. The ranker patted her head and whispered something only she could hear which resulted in her repeatedly poking Izuku with her jacks. Kasuki, Shoto. Get him out of here damn it. The girl shouted blushing furiously as everyone else minus her and Izuku just laughed. Once the three uninjured students left Iida spoke up. What did he say? Nothing of importance. The girl said before laying down. Once internships are over I'll take you somewhere nice and reintroduce you to my mom. It'd make her really happy to see me have a girlfriend. It'd make me happy too Izuku. The girl thought as she drifted to sleep. Chapter 9. Final exams the internships were finally over. Several students were discussing the results of their hands-on experience. Ashido and Hagaka were talking about how cool it was that Sayu and Kayaka worked against actual villains. Man taking on the hero killer must have been scary huh? Ashido said. I would have gone pale from fear. Hagaka added which earned some strange looks. Please, he was hardly scary. Kayaka scoffed. Didn't you get a pretty nasty cut from him, Ribbit? Sayu piped in. Yay. You were in the hospital for several days. How could he not be scary? Yuraka exclaimed. Cause Stain wasn't the one who cut her. Kasuki stated as he Shoto, Iida, and Izuku entered the classroom. Izuku spoke up after seeing the looks of confusion and curiosity throughout the class. The one who did cut her isn't around anymore. The ranker said as he walked up and gave Kayaka a kiss on the cheek before sitting down. 
This caused Mineta and Kaminari to fall to their knees crying, Kayaka to blush furiously, and Ashido and Hagakur to squeal. If the hero killer is not responsible for Jiro's injury then who is? Tokoyami asked which took attention away from Izuku's display of affection. Kayaka just mumbled in response. Ida however was still quite irritated about the event, and decided to speak up. What was that Jiro? I don't think anyone heard who you tried to make us run away from. Ida said staring intently at the girl. In all fairness she had the right idea. The rest of you would have died. Izuku piped in. Not the point Akami. So Jiro, who did you try and fight on your own? The vice president inquired once more. The class went silent so they could hear the girl's answer. The seventh Espada. Jiro mumbled. The entire class heard due to the silence. What? The entire class minus the ones who were there exclaimed. Like I said, he isn't around anymore. Izuku said as he patted Kayaka's hat while maintaining his usual deadpan expression. Kayaka in turn leaned into Izuku's chest to hide her embarrassment. What happened to him? Kaminari asked with Ashido and several other students nodding in agreement to the question. We have been legally advised not to discuss. Ida said simply which confused the class. Todoroki. Translate. Katsuki said. Why do I have to translate? Shoto asked. Because I don't want to. Duh. The explosive blonde retorted. What if I don't want to either? The half-cold half-hot user inquired. It means I threatened the lives of everyone involved if they spoke a word about what they saw. Izuku said before the argument could go further. Kayaka just giggled as the class stopped their line of questioning. Which was convenient since Azawa just entered the class. However Ashido being the gossip hound that she is, saw an opportunity. Mr. Azawa can you use your authority as a teacher to get Akami to tell us how he beat the seventh Espada? The pink girl asked. Mr. Azawa I use my authority as your summer camp teacher to order you to refuse Ashido's request. The information she seeks will be covered during the summer camp and is part of my extracurricular plan. Izuku responded since he knew that once the class knew he used his Risurechi and they would want to see it. He didn't have enough Riatsu users to keep the entire class safe from the power his sword release possessed. Izawa who knew what occurred as well as his reason for not wanting to show the class accepted with no resistance. You heard the man Ishido. Now sit down class is in session. Ishido pouted, but relented. Izawa then began to speak about the final exam, which worried some much more than others. Izawa also refused to disclose the details of the practical exam. Izuku had a hunch, but figured he'd put it to the test later. Once lunch started Izuku made his way to Nezu's office to see if his hunch was right. How can I help you young Akami? The principal greeted. The practical exam is going to pit the students against the teachers isn't it? The ranker stated simply. Straight to the point huh? I could respect that. How many of the other students know? The rat inquired. I didn't tell anyone. If anyone else figured it out I don't know about it. I am admittedly curious as to what my exam will be. Izuku admitted. That will be revealed on the day of the exam, young Akami. Nezu said with a smile. Figured as much. Have a good day, rat. Izuku said as he left the rat's office. His classmates questioned where he went, but were brushed off with relative ease. The day of the practical arrived and all, but one student was shocked at the fact that they had to fight the teachers. Kasuki took notice of this. You knew. The explosive blonde accused. No idea what you're talking about. Izuku denied. Don't give me that. You fucking knew we would face the teachers, didn't you? Kasuki said angrily. You're right I did know. Izuku said not willing to put in the effort to argue. What? Why didn't you tell us man? Kaminari and Siro exclaimed. The rat asked me not to. Izuku said causing some of the teachers to choke and sputter after hearing how the ranker referred to the principal. Ahem. Yungakami, your practical exam will be to accompany each each of the groups of students and guide them to success without physically helping them or directly giving them the answer. This is an exam to test your teaching abilities prior to the training camp. However if even one group fails then you fail. If you physically assist the students escape then you fail. If you use any energy attacks such as Ciro's and Bala's then you fail. You are capable of physically intervening in the form of defense or offense two times. A third intervention will result in your failure. Do you have any questions? The principal explained. That kid from 1B is being paired with Kasuki isn't he? Izuku said referring to Manama being the only 1B student present. That is correct. In order to make each group even young Manama has been given a second chance to pass. Nezu responded. I choose to fail this exam. Izuku said shocking everyone, even Nezu. Do you really think that little of our class? Typical arrogance from class A. Manama states indignantly. No I just think that lowly about you in particular. It's always A versus B with you. You are completely incapable of working with those of us from 1A. Why would I put in the effort to help you out when I already know you're not going to listen to a word I say and cause all three of us to fail? Izuku retorted. Manama struggled to find a response, a struggle Izuku rolled his eyes at. So you're willing to abandon all of your classmates because you refuse to work with one person? 
Nezu says, curious about the ranker's response. If they fail, they fail. All that means is that they were unable to keep up physically or mentally. My own refusal to participate shows that I fail mentally, since I don't have the patience to deal with the walking inferiority complex. Izuku says which causes Manamata snap. Fine. If I'm that much of a hindrance, then if we fail I'll drop out of UA. The copy user challenges. I refuse. Izuku says simply. Why the fuck not? Manama screeches indignantly. Whether or not you stay at UA is of no concern to me. As I said I don't have the patience to deal with you. The ranker retorts. In Akami if you do not participate then you will be expelled. Nezu says thinking that will be enough to ensure his participation. Then expel me. Izuku says without missing a beat. This causes everyone to go silent. The class and his pack in particular go berserk over this. Bro oh, come on I know he's difficult to work with, but is it really worth being expelled? Hiroshima tries to reason. Izuku come on, don't do something you'll regret. Kayaka pleads, not wanting her very new boyfriend to be expelled. You have two interventions Izuku. That's two times that you can ensure victory. All you need to do is save them for his exam. Shoto says desperately. Izuku what the actual fuck? Give us the real reason why you don't want to work with the bitch. Cause there's something you're not telling us. Katsuki demands. Izuku just sighs before explaining. He's exactly like a particularly bothersome hollow I had the displeasure of knowing in Hueco Mundo. How dare you accuse one of my students of being like those monsters. An enraged Vlad King roared. I'm not calling him a monster. I'm killing him an arrogant child with an inferiority complex that begs for validation from others. Exactly like a certain hollow. Izuku said whilst maintaining a neutral tone. After all hollows do have personalities just as any human would. I have a personality after all and I'm a hollow myself. Yungakami is this particular hollow working with the ones who have attacked us. Nezu inquired shifting from the topic of the exam. He had not forgotten about that line of discussion, nor would he. No clue. I suspect that he is in a rancor, and that he is working against us, but I have no conclusive evidence to support my hypothesis. Izuku responded. Let's say in a hypothetical scenario where he is working with the enemy, where do you think he would be ranked? Azawa asked. He needed to know how much of a potential threat this hollow was. Hmm. If I had to guess I'd say he'd be in the top three. Izuku said causing several students and even some teachers to panic a little bit. If he's in the top three then it wouldn't be arrogant to be assured of his strength right. Manama said with a surprisingly calm tone. The reason for this is that Izuku hit the nail on the head about his need for validation. Normally I'd say you make a pretty compelling argument, but not with this guy. He's obsessed with making people know that he's the strongest there is, even when he isn't. He'd execute anyone who suggested otherwise. Izuku explained. Execute. You make him sound like some kind of king. Present Mick chimed in. That's cause he was, at least in a sense. He was the self-proclaimed king of Hueco Mundo. He got enough followers to have an expendable army that he could send out to hunt anyone who claimed another hollow was stronger than him. The ranker responded. However Hueco Mundo is no place for government or law, even if it is tyrannical law. The base rule that lays the foundation for Hueco Mundo is survival of the fittest. It may not be today or tomorrow or even the next hundred years, but no one in Hueco Mundo is the strongest forever. That's just the fact of the matter. Isn't the same true for humanity too? All Might's the number one hero and the symbol of peace, but he can't be that forever. Manamar reasoned. The students of Wano were still mind-boggled that he could do something like reason. It's true of anything with autonomy. In life or in death, no one is the strongest forever. Izuku agreed. That is indeed true young Akami. However we got sidetracked. Will you work with young Manama or will you face expulsion? Nezu chimed in. Which option will get you to shut up the fastest, rat? Izuku retorted causing another fit of coughing and sputtering from the teachers and students. Working with young Manama. Aforementioned rat replies. I hate you. Izuku says as he starts walking towards the testing ground. Come on class, I gotta make sure you break a metaphorical leg rather than your actual leg, apparently. Izuku's pack smiled and sighed with relief as they start to follow him with Manama and the rest of class A following suit. The first matchup was Kirishima and Sato vs. Cementus. If we barrel straight through him we should get a higher score right? Hard boy one said to his partner and pseudo teacher. That makes sense to me. Sato replied. You're both idiots. Izuku deadpans. This causes both students to skid to a halt. Come on man no need to put it so bluntly. Kirishima pouts. Then what should we do? Sato asks. Think. Why would students be pit against teachers? What process was used to determine who would face who? It wasn't randomized, so what key factor was taken into account when deciding the matchups? Think of what you two have in common besides an enhancement of your physical strength. I'm gonna call you both idiots each time you give an answer that isn't the one I'm looking for. Izuku said maintaining his normal neutral tone. We're both guys. Sato says as Izuku gives him a look that says are you fucking kidding me? Idiot. We both focus on punching. Kirishima explains. 
They did. We both appreciate a good meal. Sato states idiotically. They did. We both have a time limit. Kirishima asks not wanting to be called an idiot again. Finally. That's exactly it. Which is why you've been pit against Cementus who either doesn't have a time limit, or at the very least has trained his limit to be longer than yours. Izuku explains. I've got an idea. What if one of us asks as a diversion while the other escapes? Sato exclaims before looking warily at Izuku. Hmm? Oh I see no issues. Izuku deadpans. Alright. I think I should be the diversion since my limit is based on stamina rather than an exact time. Sato you can run on the roof since Cementus probably won't expect it. Kirishima proposes. Sounds good to me man. Sato says as he starts to climb on top of one of the buildings. Kirishima successfully fends off Cementus long enough for Sato to escape giving them the win. The next matchup was Zero and Mineta vs Midnight. I'm not gonna be happy if you two idiots let your hormones cost me the exam. Izuku deadpanned as he walked behind Siro and Mineta. Dude how can you not appreciate Midnight's smoking hot body? Mineta exclaimed as he pointed a finger accusingly at the ranker. Little did he know that Kayaka was seething with rage at the sight. Vengeance would be had. You do realize he has a girlfriend right? Siro pointed out. Well he was a pervert he had common sense and knew when to be reasonable. And I'm several years younger than her. And a student teacher relationship is unprofessional. And such a relationship could get her teaching license and her hero license revoked. And Izuku listed before Mineta fell to the ground crying. Ignoring Mineta, how should we go about this Akami? Siro asked. The quirk is his gas space. Figure it out from there. Izuku said as he dragged Mineta behind him. Siro nodded and then shivered as Midnight entered the battle. There my precious little students thought the hero said provocatively. This broke Mineta's minimal willpower as he broke free of the ranker's grasp and rushed towards Midnight with intentions that don't need to be explained. Siro used his take to put distance between himself and the pro hero, while Izuku followed by airwalk. Mineta had succumbed to Midnight's gas and was currently out of the fight. Damn if this was an urban environment this would be a piece of cake. The tape hero cursed. That's why it isn't an urban environment. To prepare you for challenges like this one. Izuku stated. Regardless you still have superior potential for mobility than she does. That gas is a problem for you unless you can make certain that you don't breathe it in. That's true. Aha. Siro exclaimed as he put tape over his mouth before handing a piece to Izuku. Thanks, but I don't need it. My Ryatsu is dense enough to prevent the gas from reaching me. Good idea though. Now go out there and pass. The ranker said with a very, very, very slightly positive tone in his voice. Siro beamed with pride at his classmate and stuck out his hand as gesture for a handshake. Izuku shook his hand as tears began to well up in Siro's eyes. The tape hero slid his visor back down and made his way towards the exit. I know Kami never thought much of me, Mineta, and Kaminari. He thought as he used his tape to pull back out of the range of Midnight's whip. For him to tell me that I can pass Siro used his tape to immobilize the R-rated hero's whip, as well as her hand. I can't fail. Not when he expects me to succeed. Siro shouted as his tape connects to the exit gate and pulls him through it. Midnight smiles softly. To put your own desires aside to reach the expectations of a classmate that stands alone at the top. You've made both of us proud today tape hero cellophane. Isn't that right Izuku Kami? The pro says as Izuku walks past her. Who knows? The ranker says with a small smile and a look of pride. The next match was Sayu and Tokoyami vs Ectoplasm. Izuku didn't have to do much since the two pretty much had their exam on lockdown. Shoji and Hagakur also passed their exam with relative ease due to Hagakur's invisibility, allowing her to put the handcuffs on snipe. The next problematic battle was Ishido and Kaminari vs Nezu. The students severely underestimated their enemy. This should be pretty easy right Ishido. The blonde said with a carefree posture. Yay the principal's super cute, but can't really fight us. The pink girl agreed. You're both idiots. But I suppose that's why this matchup makes sense. Izuku jetpanned. Erd. Ashido pouts. Why do you mean this matchup makes sense? Kaminari asked. You're both idiots, but your quirks have great combat potential. The rat on the other hand doesn't have a quirk suited for combat, but makes up for it by being a genius. This matchup is to show you that just because someone doesn't have much combat potential, doesn't mean they're any less of a threat. The emerald hair to ranker explained. Ooh. The two said simultaneously before Izuku took several steps back with the students following confusedly. A giant steel ball then crashed through the wall where they were just standing. Jesus Christ. Kaminari exclaimed. Holy fucking shit. Ashido swore. Idiots to both of them. Izuku thought to himself. As the two idiots were running around screaming Izuku decided to throw them a bone. What is generally used in conjunction with the wrecking ball? The tranker asked. What? Kaminari asks. Every stupid thing you say steadily lowers my opinion of you. Now think before answering. Izuku deadpans. A crane. Ashido guesses. That's correct. Or it would be if it was a statement rather than a question. 
Izuku replied causing the self-proclaimed alien queen to deflate. So we have to destroy the crane? Kaminari asks. Preferably before the way to the exit is blocked. Izuku answers. Even if it is destroying the crane will buy you enough time to melt footholds or something. But what's to stop him from blocking the way to the crane? Ashido asks. Nothing really. So if the path to the exit and the path to the crane are both paths that can be blocked what should you do? Izuku asks. Kaminari looks upset that he has to do more thinking before Ashido perks up. We split up and take both paths. She exclaims to which Izuku nods. It's decided that Ashido will take the path towards the exit, since she can melt handholds to escape, while Kaminari can use his electricity to take out the crane. Both of them succeed earning them the victory. Kayaka and Koda both had an easy exam with Kayaka using her Riatsu to completely drown out present Mick's own quirk, which gave Koda the opportunity to overcome his fear of insects, and speak to them with Izuku's encouragement. Present Mick complimented Kayaka's ability to overpower his sound after they passed. Naida and Ajiro passed their test against Power Loader, while Yuraka and Aoyama passed their test against 13, leaving the most troublesome exams for last. Shoto, Yeoi Rozu, and Izuku were all running while discussing their plan. Yeoi Rozu, you should continuously make stuff so when you stop, we'll know Izawa can't see us, Shoto says. Yeoi Rozu looks like she wants to say something, but holds back. This is gonna be a problem, Izuku thinks to himself. Once Yeoi Rozu stops making her Matryoshka dolls, Shoto makes a diversion so she and Izuku can escape. You two aren't gonna pass this way. Izuku says as they're running. What? Why? Todoroki made the plan so we should be fine. Yoi Rozu says both worried and confused. He's smart, but ultimately he's a combat type that relies on his quirk more than he should. He doesn't stand a chance against Izawa. You however have to think constantly to use your quirk to its fullest. Izuku says as he comes to a stop. Why are we stopping we need to escape? Yoi Rozu shouts. No we need to have a talk. You're bummed out over the sports festival and it's plain to see. They rank her deadpans causing the everything hero to look down in shame. How can I not be? I'm a recommendation student and look at the poor show I put on. She says dejectedly. That's because you tried to fight using your body rather than your brain. You knew Dark Shadow had a weakness to light, yet you never exploited it. He scolded causing tears to well up in the girl's eyes. So let me ask you this. Why are you making the same mistake again? Izuku asks causing Yeoi Rozu to look up confused. Ha. Huh? You're relying on your athleticism against an opponent who's physically superior to you in every way. So why aren't you using your constant need to think to your advantage? Izuku says as he moves closer causing the student to back up. I don't know. The girl replies. But you know the problem. As always predicting you to make your way to the exit. So do what he least expects. The ranker says. But what if Aoi Rozu says with her back against the wall? Aoi Rozu look me in the eye and tell me that you are going to pass. Izuku commands. I will pass she says weakly. I'm not convinced say it again and say it like you mean it. Izuku says. I will pass. She affirms. I'm still not convinced and neither are you. Now say it like you mean or I'll personally drag you to Izawa. The ranker threatens. I can pass and I will pass, and no one will stop me not Izawa and certainly not you. The girl shouts. Good. Now go get your partner out of the colossal clusterfic he threw himself into. The ranker says to which Eoi Rozu nods. Eoi Rozu. What are you doing here? Shoto shouts. Shut up and let me do the thinking. The girl shouts as she throws flashbangs disguised as Matryoshka dolls into the air. The bombs blind Izawa which give Yoi Rozu enough time to free her partner and start running. So I take it you have a plan that won't fall apart like mine did. Shoto states. Keep your flames going. Once Izawa puts them out I'll take his eyes off you so you can throw up that glacier move you used in the sports festival. Yoi Rozu says leaving no room for argument. Right? Shoto responds. Izuku is back with Izawa as the pro is rubbing his eyes. Shouldn't you be with the student Sakami? The teacher asks. This is something Yeoi Rozu needs to do on her own without any intervention from me. The ranker responds. Izawa nods in response before giving chase. Once Izawa has the students in his sight Yeoi Rozu throw more Matryoshka dolls at the teacher which he bats away. However it takes his eyes off Shoto long enough for him to create his glacier. Alright now what? Shoto asks as her turns to Yeoi Rozu only to see her holding her uniform open so she could create what looked like Izawa's capture scarf. Izawa sees two cloaked figures and uses his capture scarf to wrap around the one he believes to be Aoi Rozu, which turned out to be a doll. The girl then attempts to trip the latch on a catapult only for her hand to slip. Izawa pulls back giving her a second chance which launches the differently compass capture tool towards the teacher. Shoto uses his flames which causes the scarf to compress around the eraser hero, earning them the victory. The Aoi Rozu beamed with pride and looked around for Izuku, only to find that he wasn't anywhere to be seen. Ha. Huh? Where's Akami? The girl asked. He left to prepare for the next exam shortly after you used those flashbangs. 
he said you had the exam in the bag and didn't need his help, so he decided to prepare for what he considered to be the most troublesome pair. As Awa explained. Yeoi Rozu just smiled and nodded in response. As Izuku walked with Manuma and Kasuki to their exam and could only think one thing. Disagreement in 3, 2, 1. We should run. Manuma said. We should fight. Kasuki said at the same time. And here we go. Izuku thought. Kasuki you might be able to fight against All Might pretty well given the fact that you can already use Riatsu, but Manuma on the other hand, won't be able to keep up as well in a fight. Izuku reasoned. Are you calling me weak? Manuma asks. I'm calling you weaker. You can copy Kasuki's quirk, but you can't copy his skill with it, nor can you copy his ability to utilize Riatsu. So seeing as you can't fight to the same degree and therefore came to the conclusion that escape is the best option, whereas he believes he can hold his own well enough that combat is a viable option, what should the two of you do? Izuku asks. Compromise. Do the two say simultaneously? Precisely. Izuku says just as they are approached by All Might. I am here. Unfortunately for you, heroes. The symbol of peace says ominously. Manuma then proceeds to tap Kasuki's shoulder before running away. Don't think I'll let you get away. All Might shouts before being intercepted by a kick from Izuku that sends him flying back. One more offense or defense. Kasuki I'm gonna leave the rest of the offense to you unless I need to step in. Izuku said. Sounds good to me. He says as they both flash towards All Might with the intention of keeping him off Manuma. Izuku hangs back and lets Kasuki fight against All Might. All things considered Kasuki does pretty well however the air pressure from All Might's attacks makes it hard to compensate for the force movements caused by said air pressure. Damn it. He isn't as fast as me, but he's still capable of keeping pace. No wonder he's number one. Kasuki says to himself. He's recognizing his weakness, something he's consistently had difficulty doing in the past. You know your advantages and disadvantages Kasuki, now what will you do? Izuku wonders as he watches the battle from above. Even still if I can't overcome you then I won't be able to beat an Aranker on my own. If my current limits aren't good enough then I'll push past them. Kasuki roars as he flashes around leaving several after images. He continues to throw in feints with his actual attacks to throw All Might off guard and continuously pushes the symbol of peace back. Meanwhile in the observation room the students are starstruck. Holy shit. The Kugo is pushing back All Might. Hiroshima shouts out. And he's moving so fast. He's like a Kami was during the sports festival. Ashido cries out. Let him have it big guy. Kayaka says with pride. So this is it. Iida says. The level we can reach with Izuku's training. Shoto finishes. I can see how far you've come from our first class in Gakugo. Show it to me. All Might thinks to himself before finishing his thought out loud. Show it to me young Gakugo. Show me your resolve to surpass yourself. You don't even need to ask. Fenner impact. Kasuki roars as he uses his Riatsu to empower his explosion and shape it like a wolf. Thank you Izuku. For everything. The blonde thinks as he collapses after expending all of his Riatsu. Once the dust clears All Might is shown on his back. The Kugo tied with All Might, holy fucking shit. Kirishima, Ashido, Siro, and Kaminari all cry out. Manuma then proceeds to pass through the exit, earning them both the win. Kayaka sees Izuku observing the fight with a smile on his face. Had they've improved so much in so little time. Those two are certainly gonna become quite the monsters given enough time. Izuku thought to himself as he picked up Katsuki and began making his way to the exit. You can get up now All Might. The ranker said as he walked away. Nothing gets past you does it young Akami. All Might said with his trademark smile. Tell that blonde kid you're training that he's welcome to join us on our little training camp. He'll need the boost if he's gonna survive the upcoming battles. Izuku said before using Sunido to rejoin his class. Nothing gets past you indeed. The symbol of peace said to himself as he picked himself up and walked towards the exit. If Kasuki's growth was any indication Mario would indeed need the boost to be the best he could be as the next symbol of peace. The training camp would be hell, he could feel it. A training camp that even experienced pro heroes can benefit from with the sole purpose of preparing everyone to fight enemies that surpass the human condition in every way. It's been a long time since he trained under someone, and Toshinori Yagi could not wait to step up to the challenge. Chapter 10. Camp Waco Mundo it was time. Time for the training camp that some were excited for and others were dreading. What was universal was the anticipation that everyone felt. Those present with the pro heroes Endeavor, Hawks, Murko, Best Genist, All Might, Fakum, Ryukyu, Sir Nighteye, Gangorka, Mount Lady, Kamui Woods, Detherms, and the Wild Wild Pussycats, the staff from UA, UA's Big 3, Class 1B and all of Class 1A, with the exception of 1. Hey where's Mineta? Kaminari asked, not seeing the grape-headed dwarf. He won't be joining us. I made sure of that after that stunt he pulled during the final exam. Izuku answered as he walked in front of everyone. Kaminari was sad that his friend wouldn't be joining them, but he couldn't blame the ranker for excluding him. Izuku cleared his throat which caused the murmuring between groups to cease. 
Alright as I'm sure most of you saw during the sports festival, I don't like any form of public speaking, so I'll keep this brief. The training you're going to be put through will be different from anything you've done before, in a place so foreign to you that it will go against everything you know and believe. I have no intention of going easy on any of you, so if you're having cold feet then leave now, I don't have time for you. Izuku said nonchalantly. I think you're underestimating us pros a little too much kid. Tiger spoke up. No, he isn't. Tiger looked back in shock as he heard the words from the number 2 pro. Endeavor's right. This kid is on a completely different level. If he wanted to he could flatten us all in a second, and we wouldn't be able to do a damn thing about it. Murko added shocking everyone who hadn't personally seen the green-haired ranker fight. The testimony of two high-ranked pros silenced any further objections to Izuku's warning. I think the children are done whining so let's get on with it young Akami. Recovery girl said walking up to the ranker with a smile. Recovery girl's going to. Ashido asked. Yep. Her ability would gain a massive boost from Riatsu, and I suspect she'd be able to heal using her own Riatsu, rather than her patient stamina. As an ability it's invaluable. Izuku stated as his pink classmate nodded in understanding. Desker. As soon as Izuku uttered the word a garganto opened up, shocking those who had never seen one before. Which was everyone aside from Katsuki and Kayaka. After a chorus of inquiries about what Izuku just did his most prominent students answered the question. It's called a garganta. Katsuki said. Basically he ripped open the fabric of reality to create a path from here to Huikomundo. Kayaka explained. How do you two know about it, and why are you not surprised? Yuraka asked. The two friends looked back with a smirk. Where do you think Izuku took us to train? The both retorted simultaneously. That's enough. Let's go. Izuku said as he walked into the garganta followed by Kayaka, Kasuki, and Maruko. Everyone else followed their lead. Once everyone exited the garganta they were met with a gruesome sight. They saw a smaller hollow being devoured by a bigger one. The weaker hollow's cries of anguish would haunt them for weeks. Why aren't we saving it? Shizaki cried out. So all of you can see and understand the law of this world. Izuku answered. So this what you meant by survival of the fittest? Shoto said shocking those who hadn't heard Izuku's explanation of Waco Mundo in the previous weeks. Once the hollow finished its meal it began to change. Once its transformation was finished it was more humanoid. So that's the transition from a judge's to Vasto Lordha. First time we've ever seen it. Katsuki said as Kayaka nodded. Yep. Kayaka take it out, I want to see how strong you've gotten since we were last here. Izuku said. His girlfriend just grinned and flashed towards it. Akami are you sure that's safe? I thought you said Vasto Lords were only one level weaker than Arankers. Present Mick asked. Izuku had a meeting with the UA staff about the different levels of hollows and how the food chain worked. Mick's statement shocked everyone who had seen how strong Arankers could be firsthand. Akami you have to save Jiro, please. Gyoi Rosa cried out. Don't you dare insult her like that. Izuku said as Yeoi Rosa was taken back by the aggression in his voice. Shut up and watch. Everyone was amazed as the first year girl sent the hollow flying with a single kick. She dodged one zero and diffused another with her sound waves. Kayaka then flashed behind the Vasto Lord and killed it by projecting her sound waves directly into its head. She then flashed back to the group with a proud smile. Piece of cake. She said while giving a double thumbs up. She looked behind her boyfriend to see everyone else present gaping at how strong she was. What's got them so tripped out? They were still under the delusion that you were weaker than them. Kasuki said as Izuku nodded in agreement. Bird. She said before giving a fake pout. Izuku then stepped up in front of the group with Kasuki and Kayaka on either side of him. Listen up assholes. The three of us are going to be the ones teaching you everything you need to know. Kasuki said. As it stands right now all three of us are stronger than each and every one of you. So I don't want any back sass from any of you. Kayaka added on. I hope you're ready, cause class is in session. Your first objective is Izuku said with a mischievous look that Muriko knew all too well. Standing. The three teachers proceeded to raise their Riatsu to the max, causing everyone present to collapse to the ground. The only one capable of standing was Muriko due to her prior training. Or I teach what you want me to do. Muriko asked while bouncing on the balls of her feet, an action that shocked everyone present. You're gonna be helping us. Keep your Riatsu at max for as long as possible. Kasuki said. To raise my stamina right. Sounds good to me. The rabbit hero said as she raised her Riatsu, causing the weight everyone else felt to increase even more. H how do we even do this, RR Ribbit? Sayu asked for everyone. The four Riatsu users looked at each other before answering simultaneously. It depends on the person. Everyone sweat dropped at the explanation. W well how did each of you do it? Hagakur asked. Instinct. Izuku deadpanned. I got the hang of it naturally. Kayaka responded with a shrug. I just kindled it inward and searched for what I felt externally. Muriko said with a thoughtful look as she tried to explain how she did it. I just tried using my quirk inside my body. Kasuki said. 
Shortly after Katsuki gave his answer Kirishima, Kaminari, and Shoto all stood up. Surprisingly Kaminari was the first one up. Boy thanks man. Feels like a huge weight off my shoulders. Kaminari said as he dusted himself off. Yeah that was a really good way to put it Bakubro. Kirishima said as he stretched to loosen up his muscles. It makes sense if you think about it. Especially since our quirks don't work inwardly, and it's basically like trying to get a separate quirk. Shoto said as the other two nodded. But you guys got the first step down. Now try and raise it to your max. Stamina training is next on the agenda. Kayaka said as the three young men proceeded to do just that which increased the weight yet again. CC can they do it like over there? Hagaker pleaded. No. It gives you a sense of urgency to get it done faster because the longer you take the greater the weight will get. Call it incentive. Izuka retorted shooting down the invisible girl's hopes. The next person to stand up was one Kanoko Kamori. Ha. Huh? I did it. The mushroom girl said in shock. Congrats. Start your stamina training. Katsuki said. The shy girl nodded nervously before beginning. Shihai Kawaro joined Kamori shortly after. Those that continued to be on the ground cursed inwardly each time someone stood up. Surprisingly the last two that stood up were all might and endeavor. Ha 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 ha. It's been a while since I've had training that difficult. All might laughed. So that's the gap between us and that kid ha. Huh? Endeavor said with his arms crossed. The next two days are gonna be devoted to stamina training. This will increase your stamina as well as your Riatsu capacity. Izuku said as everyone nodded in understanding. Two days later. Well what's up next Akami? I'm so pumped for the rest of this training. Kirishima asked excitedly. Next is standing on air. Izuku said which confused everyone. Aforementioned confusion was cleared up once Izuku, Kasuki, Kayaka, and Maruko stood on air. It's pretty much using your Riatsu to create a platform beneath your feet so you can stand on it. Maruko explained as the other three nodded in agreement. Unsurprisingly, Saya was a natural at standing on air, and she'd likely be a natural at high-speed movement as well. Nijire Hado, Hawks, and surprisingly Recovery Girl were all naturals at it as well. Air walking only took one day of training, so the next day was high-speed movement. High-speed movement should be pretty easy for you Haida, Yuraka said. We'll see. The concepts we've worked with so far have been relatively simple yet in practice it was very difficult. Iida said as his friend nodded in understanding. The best way I can explain it is you're just using your Riatsu to propel you forward at high speeds. Izuku said as Kasuki, Kayaka, and Muriko all nodded since it was something you really had to get a feel for. As predicted Iida and Sayu got it down the fastest. Kaminari, Siro, and Ashido were all next in line to get it down with Recovery Girl not too far behind. Azawa and Hound Dog were both adept at it as well. It took two more days for everyone else to get it down. The next morning a surprise was awaiting everyone. Alright today we're doing Izuku was cut off by someone tackle hugging him into the ground. Everyone was on guard until Izuku stood up with relative ease. Brienne. It's been forever. A green haired ranker with a ram skull mask on her head cried out. Yes, yes, good to see you too Nilil. Now get off me you're making my girlfriend jealous. Izuku said as he noticed Kayaka's eye twitching. You have a girlfriend. The newly named Nilil gasped. Izuku nodded and pointed to Kayaka causing Nilil to flash over to here and look her up and down. Oh my god you're so cute. Nilil squealed causing Kayaka to blush at the praise. You have good taste green she said while giving him a thumbs up. Training humans green. A blonde woman with a deeper voice asked. There a problem with that Halibal. Izuku retorted. Damn it green I don't care how strong you are don't talk to mistress Halibal like that. A blue haired girl with a singular horn fragment on her head. For once I agree with this idiot. You better respect mistress Halibal. A well endowed dark skinned woman with a crown like mask fragment on her head said. Indeed these two Neanderthals are quite right. A girl with olive-colored hat and incredibly long sleeves said. The three rankers then proceeded to get into an argument with each other. Apache, Mila Rose, Sung Sun. Knock it off. Halibal said to the newly named rankers which silenced them. If the four of you could just leave that would be great. You're interrupting my class. Izuku deadpan causing the three fractions to seethe with anger. So you are training humans. Halibal responded. Yes I am and I'll only repeat myself one more time. Is. There. A problem. Izuku enunciated. Why? The blonde ranker asked. I don't owe you anything let alone an explanation. Izuku said right as Nilil got in between the two. Geez why are you being so aggressive green? Nilil asked confused at her old acquaintance's aggression. Because I can see her being my enemy. Izuku said shocking all the rankers present. We've always been on good terms why would I be your enemy? Halibal said as her eyes narrowed. Because you do anything to protect those children of yours. Including joining up with the group of rankers that's been attacking the world of the living. The group that's been attacking my home. Izuku said as his own eyes narrowed and his Riatsu raised. I have done no such thing. Halibal said as she raised her own Riatsu in response. Jeez. Both of you calm down. Green it's just been the five of us that's all. 
Hellable you should understand better than anyone the desire to protect those weaker than yourself. Nelil scolded the two. The two spot a level of rankers proceeded to calm down. Izuku then walked back to the humans under his tutelage. I have a class to teach. So if you're quite done, I'll visit some other time. Izuku said while walking away. Excuse me. Ms. Hellable and Ms. Nelil was it? Would you be willing to become our allies? Nezu asked. Um Green how is this rat talking? Apache asked. It's not a rat idiot it's obviously a dog. Mila Rose responded. Your arguing gives me a headache, so don't you dare start. That's the rat principle of UA Academy. He can talk due to his ability which enhances his intelligence to genius levels. Izuku responded. A rat has an ability. Neely asked. A vast majority of humans do as well. Through an unknown mystery of human evolution, many humans have developed abilities called quirks. The aforementioned rat explained. Katsuki demonstrate please. Izuku asked as Katsuki nodded and released an explosion from his hands. Do you know who these enemy rankers are? Halibal asked. The sexta Spada introduced himself as Grim Jujijijakis. All Might piped in. Ooh, I remember Grimmy. Nelil said. He always was kin to angry. I'm in I'll help you green. We will as well. Halibal said. Sure. Halibal, Nelil, the class is learning to use Riatsu to enhance their physical abilities. Help out whoever needs it. Apache, Sung Sun Mila Rose. You three are decently strong, but you could be stronger. So get stronger. Izuku said as the two spotted class rankers agreed, and the three Fratchians begrudgingly agreed. The strength enhancers like All Might, Ida, Hiroshima, Tiger, Kabar, and Death Arms all got the hang of it instantly due to the subject being just like their quirks. They even got a head start on boosting their quirks with Riatsu. This training only took a day due to the previous training sessions requiring good Riatsu control. Next was incorporating Riatsu with quirks for some, and emitting Riatsu for others. Hey teach. How do I do a bala? Muruko asked. Apache demonstrated a bala after seeing several people confused as to what one was. It's like a weaker, but faster zero. She said as everyone gained an understanding of what it was. You condense your Riatsu, cause it to build up pressure, and release. Sung Sun said. Once you get it down you should develop something similar to a zero or bala. From there just kinda experiment with it so you can determine how to do what. Mila Rose added. Um, I think I got it, but it doesn't look like what Akami did at the USJ. Hiroshima asked Halibal. Akami? She asked. Oh yeah you guys call him Green, huh? Izuku Akami is his human name. Hiroshima replied. I see. Well to answer your question I believe the reason may be due to the difference in Riatsu. Humans are different beings than Hollows, and they each have different Riatsu as a result. The blonde ranker explained. How that makes sense. That also explains why our high speed movement sounds different than yours. Hiroshima hypothesized as Halibal nodded in agreement. Well it may be different, but am I at least getting the basic concept right? Hiroshima asked. Show me and I shall tell you. The woman responded. Hiroshima then released what looked like a jagged crystalline ball of Riatsu that was faster than a Siro, but slower than a Bala. I see. May I see what your quirk is? Halibal requested. Hiroshima obliged and hardened his body. I believe that it's taking the form that it is due to the nature and appearance of your quirk. The blonde-haired electric user released attacks that look like lightning in a similar manner. Halibal explained. That makes sense actually. The red-haired boy responded. Those with quirks that are external had varying appearances. Kaminari's looked electric, Kirishima's crystalline, Todoroki's looked crystalline sometimes and looked like flames other times, Kabara's spiraled, and Siro's looked rectangular. Those with internal quirks like Azawa or strength-enhancing quirks like All Might emitted Riatsu that had a generic arsing projectile look. Kasuki you're gonna spar with Apache. Kayaka you're gonna spar with Mila Rose. Muriko you're gonna spar with Sung Sun. Izuku said. The three humans nodded. The Fratchians however were not so quiet. Do you really think they're on our level? Mila Rose asked. The gorilla is right I doubt they can keep up with us. Sung Sun jabbed at Mila Rose at the humans. I think that's what he wants to find out idiots. Apache said. Apache is in fact correct. Comparing their strength to an Aranker that isn't me will be good for them. Izuku said which caused Apache to look smugly at her fellow Fratchians. Alright Katsuki and Apache, you two are going first. Katsuki your goal is to push her to use her Resurrection at the very least. No killing, no crippling. Are you two ready? Izuku said as the Ranker and Explosion user both nodded. Begin. Apache fired off a bala, which was easily dodged by Katsuki. Katsuki responded with an explosion the size of a gauntlet blast. Katsuki proceeded to follow Apache after she used Sunido to avoid the blast. Apache proceeded to deliver a solid kick to the Explosion user's stomach. As he flew back he sent a line with a confusing trajectory before having it explode against the Ranker's back. Shit. That actually fucking hurt. Apache cried out. Damn straight. Don't even think about underestimating me. Kasuki responded. It's weird seeing Bakugo without a total combat advantage. 
Kaminari said with Zero nodding in agreement. True in all of the combat classes he pretty much dominates. Hiroshima added. This training isn't just to gauge our strength compared to those three. It's also to show you how much stronger the enemies we'll be facing are. Kayaka said as she watched her close friend dish out just as much damage as he was receiving. You aren't bad human. Congress you pass your minimum requirement. Apache complimented. Dross. Sirva. Apache's red riatsu sword and engulfed her. Once her appearance was made visible, those who had yet to see a research in were shocked. Her feet were replaced with hooves, her entire body was covered by fur in the shape of a jumpsuit. A mass fragment changed from a single horn into a pair of antlers. Alright. Show me what you've got a rancor. Kasuki roared as he combined Sunido with his explosions to make him even faster than before. The two opponents pummeled each other with explosions and ballas, as well as physical attacks. In the end the match was a tie, and the two both collapsed on the ground. Aichi actually tied with Apache. Mila Rose said incredibly shocked. Sung Sun was silent while Halibur was quite proud, since had she fought Kasuki with her previous level, she would have lost. The covery girl, could you patch those two up please? Izuku requested. The older woman obliged and healed the two combatants. Kayaka, Mila Rose. You two are next, get ready. The Emerald Ranker stated. The two nodded and got ready to fight. Begin. Like Apache, Mila Rose attacked first. However she used her sword rather than a bola. Kayak used her sound waves to deflect the blade, so she could get five solid jabs to the Ranker's chest, before using a push kick to send her flying back. Mila Rose growled before firing an orange zero which was diffused by Kayaka's sound waves. Not bad girl. But your attacks lack power. Mila Rose said. Power doesn't matter that the attack doesn't hit its mark. Kayaka retorted before flashing behind the dark-skinned Ranker and unleashing a full-powered sound blast that sent her flying into the ground. Devour, Leona. The burst of orange Riatsu revealed Mila Rose's very skimpy researching. You're right. Let's see if my attacks hit now. The Ranker cried as she flashed front of Kayaka and smacked her with the flat of her blade. Kayaka took several more hits and cuts before deciding to take a page from Izuku's book and use the after-image technique. Like Kasuki she used a combination of heavy attacks and feints to confuse her opponent. Kayaka still took some hits and cuts, but due to her attacks hitting their mark more often she came out on top. The job. You fought smarter rather than harder. Izuka complimented which caused Kayaka to blush while she was being healed. Murko, Sung Sun. Izuka called out as they already prepared themselves. The battle was quite short due to Maruko being weaker than Kasuki and Kayaka. The rabbit hero had the advantage until Sung Sun used her research in Anaconda. The battle results were such. Kasuki vs Apache, Tai. Kayaka vs Mila Rose, Victor Kayaka. Murko vs Sung Sun, Victor Sung Sun. Time skip. Summer break was over and so was the training camp. Everyone had grown leaps and bounds, Halibal and Nelial included. By using Halibal, Nelial, Zamari, and Grimjo as a basis most of the students and pros were around Grimjo's level. Kayaka, Kasuki, Murko, and Shoto were all around Halibal's previous level. However it was naive to assume that the Espada had remained at the same strength. For they had grown much stronger as well. My Espada. Soon we will go to war. An older dark-skinned man with a grown-shaped mass fragment said. This man was Berrigan Lu Senburn, the Premier Espada. To his right was the Segunda Espada, a pale-skinned man named Alcrior Cipher. To his left was the newly ranked Tercera Espada Grimjur Jijujakis. The Cuardo Espada was Neutra Gilga. The Quinto was Lupi Antoner. The Sexta was Aruni Eroeruri. The Satima was Rudbrun Chalut. The Octavo was Dordoni Alessandro del Salacio. The Novena was Gantenbe Mesquita. The Decimo was Saruchi Sanduichi. Chapter 11. Declaration of War It's been a couple of weeks since Izuku and his students returned from Hueco Mundo. Once the students returned it was revealed that Mineta had been expelled for his performance in the final exam, as well as his prior infractions that had been made aware to the faculty. It was also revealed that due to the danger that the enemy rankers pose, UA would become a boarding school, so the families of those who would fight in the coming battles would not be in danger. The one to take Mineta's place was one Hitashi Shinso, who like Stain had natural talent when it came to Riatsu. So, how'd I do this time? A worn out Shinso asked after his most recent spar with Izuku. You're not on the level of the others yet, but you did incredibly well. You'll be prepared at least for the physical aspect of class, leaving just the academic portion that you need to prepare for. Izuku responded indifferently as usual. Shinso just nodded and walked back to his dorm, so he could get up to speed academically. Izuku on the other hand planned to go take a nap. The next day was the first day back to school after all. Other than Shinso being inducted into class 1A, the day was relatively normal. Until the students got back to the dorms to find five surprise guests waiting. Hello Izuku how was your first day back to school? Inko Midori you greeted. Hey Kitsuki. You haven't been causing any trouble right? Mitsuki Bakugo jabbed at her son. Mitsuki please. 
Masaru Bakugo said to his wife despite being used to how she is. Hello Kayaka, we know you're independent, but your father and I wanted to see you again before school got back into the swing of things. Mikajiro explained. Yep and on top of Fa, why are you holding hands with Izuku? Kaitoku Jiro said noticing the interlocked hands of his daughter and her boyfriend. Kayaka. Izuku said while looking at his girlfriend accusingly. Yes, Izuku. The punk girl replied while keeping her eyes glued to the floor. I distinctly recall you saying that you told your parents that we were dating. The ranker said while maintaining his accusatory look. I, ah, uh, told a parent singular. Kayaka responded nervously. Kaitoku proceeded to give his wife a betrayed look while she mimicked her daughter and had her eyes glued to the floor. Izuku then walked up to Kaitoku and placed a hand on his shoulder while giving him a sympathetic look. I am so, so, sorry that your wife and daughter this untrusting of you. The ranker said. Thank you. You think I'd be used to it by now? A teary-eyed Kaitoku responded as he placed his own hand on Izuku's shoulder. What do you mean you think I'd be used to it by now Kaitoku dad? Kayaka and Mikajiro cried simultaneously. Well I mean, if you didn't tell him something like this, then what does that say about your communication related to more important things? Izuku said as Kaitoku nodded in agreement. The two Jiro women just sputtered before falling to their knees and apologizing. Izuku is a father there is no one better I could wish for my daughter to be with. But are you sure Kayaka is the one you want to be with? Kaitoku said causing Kayaka to shoot up and prepare to pummel her father. For better or for worse she's the only one I want and the only one I've ever wanted. Izuku responded causing his girlfriend to become a blushing mess. Yay. I was in Silum jealous that Green picked her over me. But at the same time she's such a cutie that I can't stay mad for long. Neelil said as she walked in Halibul and the trespassers. I can confirm that Neelil made several passes at Green. I can also confirm that Green denied each and every one. Halibul added causing Neelil to pout and the trespassers to snicker. Izuku. Before I ask my question I would like to make it clear that I am not insinuating that this green-haired young lady is better than my Kayaka. But what made you choose Kayaka over her? Kaitoku asks as everyone shifts their gaze over to the emerald-haired ranker. Inko and Kayaka giving particularly hard stares. I don't know. The heart wants what it wants I guess. Izuku deadpan causing Kayaka to clutch her heart before falling to her knees. My heart. She cried out. My heart can't take this. Inko rushed over to her son with speed that would make Samari blush and hugged him tightly. Oh my baby boy is such a sweet young man. The Midoriya woman said whilst crying with happiness. You must be very proud of your son Mrs. Akami. Yeoi Rozu said with a smile before feeling an aura of bloodlust radiate off the older woman. Do not use that name in my presence. Inko said venomously. The rest of the class just looked confused. My last name is actually Midoriya, but you know dead people can't go to school. Izuku responded clearing up the confusion. Kasuki looked away from the group while softly whistling a tune. Kasuki was supposed to tell you lot seeing as I have a tendency of forgetting things when I nap. And as you all know I nap very frequently. Gaytsuki. Why didn't you tell your classmates my baby boy's real last name? The Midoriya matriarch said with words that would kill lesser men. Kasuki walked up to his aunt Inko and bowed. I have no excuse. I am sorry. The blonde explosion user said whilst maintaining his bow. Inko delivered a hard chop to the boy's head before stating that all was forgiven. Now Izuku introduce us to your classmates. The ranker's mother said leaving no room for arguments. Izuku obliged and even dragged 1B and the big 3 to the dorms, so he could introduce them as well. He also dragged the faculty to the dorms, and FaceTimed Maruko, so his mother could meet literally everyone he could get a hold of. Now Izuku wasn't scared of his mother no, no, no. He just got very unnerved when she applied her maternal authority. The group that was class 1A, class 1B, and the UA faculty, all proceeded to have a giant dinner. Of course all good things did have to come to an end. Yue's front gate was blown in as the League of Villains entered the school. The group consisted of several small-time villains and an army of Naomis. This small army was led by Tamur Shigaraki, Kurajiri, Magni, Mr. Compress, Mustard, Moonfish, Twice, Muscular, and of course all for one. Everyone present for the Yue potluck parents included, walked out led by Izuku, Kayaka, and Kasuki. Even All Might joined the fray due to recovery girl healing most of his injuries, thus increasing the time he could use one for all. Izuku are these the villains the school talked about before becoming a boarding school? Inko asked with the other parents having the same idea. No. These guys are all small fry. There's a bigger threat looming over the horizon. Izuku responded. Calling me a small fry is quite arrogant of you boy. All for one stated amusedly. However he isn't wrong all for one. That boy could fight me in my prime with both of his arms tied behind his back and still win. All Might retorted. Just then a garganta opened and Berrigan Lucenburn stepped out. Silence ants. The king of Waco Mundo stands before you. The premier Espada said. That's my assumption was right. You are an Espada. Izuku said. Not just any Espada Green. I am the premier. The king said. Ha. Huh? 
I guess you were the Tercera, Max. Izuku jabbed at the older man. Really now? Perhaps I should demonstrate my power to you and correct that opinion of yours. Berrigan threatened whilst hefting his axe over his shoulder. And perhaps I should remind you why you were never able to get me to join you when we were Vasto Lords. Izuku said while drawing his sword. Such primitive weapons. All for one said as he fired his air cannon at both the rankers. And both the rankers proceeded to stop the blast with their bare hands. Izuku was content to let them run with their tails in between their legs. Berrigan however was not so forgiving. Insolent worms. The king said as he charged a crimson zero and caught it in the swing of his axe, creating an arc that annihilated the entire league of villains. He aimed another zero at Izuku and his group only for Izuku to fire a gesturless zero from his chest that overpowered the premier zero. Berrigan however remained undamaged. HMPH. We shall meet again green. Consider this a declaration of war. The king said as he opened another garganto and returned to Hueco Mundo. What a troublesome guy. Izuku said as he began walking back inside. The parents present however were petrified. TT that's who why you're going to FFF fight Izuku. Inko said while trembling. Unfortunately. Izuku responded. You can keep up with that guy, but how the fuck do you expect these kids, our kids, to keep up with monsters like that Mitsuki shouted. The kids are stronger than you know. I've made sure of that. All of the kids that I've spent my time training are stronger than a vast majority of pro heroes by several miles. The ranker responded. I don't think I need to tell you what I'll do to you if Katsuki dies, do you understand me Izuki? The blonde woman threatened. Anything you can do will be nothing compared to what I do to myself. Izuku retorted. After that hefty note the parents went home, mostly confident in Izuku and their children. However nothing can stop a parent from worrying about their child, whether they admit it or not. The Spada's declaration of war had been made and everyone was at least a little on edge. However there was an event even closer that the students of UA would have to overcome. The Provisional License Exam. Chapter 12. Provisional License Exam Izuku is currently enjoying a nice peaceful slumber. Izuku wake the fuck up you still have school. A very familiar voice shouted. And you owe me another date for siding with my dad over me. Another equally familiar voice added. Scratch that. Izuku was enjoying a nice peaceful slumber. Sometimes I wish I died as Aminos. Izuku thought as he woke up and got ready. When he made it downstairs however he saw several students still in their pajamas. He also saw that breakfast was finished just as he got downstairs. Hey Kami you must be pretty excited if you're ready for school this early. Kirishima said with the other students agreeing. I'm gonna kill those two. Izuku mumbled under his breath. I already told you to call me by my first name. The ranker added. Kirishima uttered a quick apology before digging into Sato's cooking. Izuku proceeded to leave the dorms and head to class anyway. At least there he could nap in peace. Izuku's school doesn't start for another hour. Why are you already asleep in my class? Azawa asked his green-haired student. Kayaka and Katsuki woke me up. Izuku replied before setting his head back down. Understandable have a nice day. Azawa mumbled before getting into his sleeping bag and laying down behind his desk. A student slowly dripped into class only to see their missing classmate at his desk asleep. Izuku, why are you sleeping here? Shoto asked. Because I'm not allowed to nap in peace apparently. Izuku said. Shoto just nodded confusedly while Kayaka and Katsuki snickered. Bakugo, Jiro, I'd appreciate it if you didn't wake Akami up early. I don't need him sleeping through my class before class even starts. As always said as he stood up. He stretched a little bit before shooting a small Riyatsu blast at the aforementioned Aranker's head. This caused the green-haired student to lift his head up and rest his chin on his palm. Alright your next hurdle is on its way. As always said causing everyone sans Izuku to tense up. The provisional license exam is approaching. This caused the class to let out a collective sigh. Said class proceeded to go on about how easy it would be due to them having Riyatsu. Izuku released an exasperated sight. You still have to train your quirks and develop super moves, morons. Izuku said causing them to get blank looks on their faces before panicking again. As always sighed before expanding his quirk with Riyatsu to silence the class. Akami is right, gaining Riyatsu doesn't mean you can slack off on your court training. So you'll be working with Ectoplasm, Cementus, and myself to develop super moves to take your quirks to the next level. As always explained as the students nodded in understanding. The Ida proceeded to make an over-the-top expression of gratitude. And let's not forget his robotic movements too. Both hero classes were in the training dreamland working on their quirks. Due to Izuku not having a quirk he helped students come up with ideas. For example he recommended that Tokoyami cloak himself using Dark Shadow in order to lessen his weakness to close range combat. He also gave Kirishima the idea to take his hardening to the next level which the red haired boy dubbed Red Riot Unbreakable, something that Izuku proceeded to break almost immediately. Other students like Kayaka and Kaminari got support items to help with their quirk. Some of the rare ones like Kasuki and Ishido developed special moves on their own, like the explosive AP shot and AP shot autocannon or the max viscosity acid veil. 
Soon enough the time for the provisional license exam had arrived. Class 1 and 1B would take the exam at different venues, in order to give the other schools somewhat of a chance. Once at the venue Izawa heard a familiar voice. Hey racer is it you? Pro hero Miss Joke asked. It's been a while ha huh, buddy? It has been a while ha huh, joke? The lethargic man responded. Let's get married. Ms. Joke said which caused a sparkle in Ishido's ever romantic eyes. Sure. Azawa replied causing Joke to stutter and blush like a madwoman before she noticed Azawa's smirk. Just kidding. The man added at the last minute earning him a high five from Izuku. You played a joke on me. The smile hero said incredulously which earned a nod from Azawa. What can I say that training camp that you refused to go to mellowed me out a little bit. As always said as he recalled Izuku helping him out whenever the man's insomnia and lethargy would bring his stress levels too high for him to grasp the completely unknown concepts that were presented to him. Those events caused a new but unbreakable friendship to form between the two. Well excuse me for wanting to help prepare my kids for the exam. Joke retorted while pouting. Speaking of kids Ketsubutsu class 2 approached and when Yoshindo got especially close. Don't touch me. Izuku said before Shindo could even move to grab his hands. After the interaction between the two schools everyone went inside and listened to the briefing on the exam. Once everyone was out on the field, Izuku gave a little pep talk to his classmates or rather his friends. Alright everyone listen up cause I'm only gonna say this once. Each and every one of you soaked your blood, sweat, and tears into your training. I've seen you grow from naive kids to heroes that would sooner die than run away from danger. And as one of your teachers I can honestly say I've never been prouder. The ranker said causing some of his classmates to tear up. Now then once the exam start we're off. Use everything you've learned because this year UA is going to finish before everyone else. Izuku finished earning nods and smiles from his friends. Meanwhile in the stands a different conversation was going on. It's weird to see you with a full class. You must like these kids. Which is why you should have told them about the UA crush. Joke said confidently. They didn't need to know. I know you're going to ask why so I'll tell you. Class 1 is going to finish this portion of the exam before any other class. Azawa responded earning a look of shock from Ms. Joke. Eraser you don't really think the smile hero was interrupted by this starting signal. She turned her attention to the exam just at the right moment. Right as the signal went off all of class 1 utilized their high speed movement to disappear and take out the necessary students to move on. Class 1 had passed the first portion of the exam in 30 seconds. What the hell? Ms. Joke shouted incredulously. I told you joke. My class is going to pull out all the stops this year. As always said with a glint of pride in his eyes. What have you been feeding those kids eraser? The smile hero questioned still in shock at how fast UA's class finished the exam. As much as I'd love to take credit for this it wasn't me who pushed them this far. Izuku Okami did. Izuku took my class and turned them into seasoned warriors that would give plenty of pros a run for their money. He helped me, Mick, All Might, all of us achieve a level we never thought possible. And all he wanted in return was human connection. As Alwa explained his joke grew even more shocked that Izuku had helped not only students but teachers and experienced pros as well. The other pros listening in on the conversation were equally shocked at the feats UA's first years had just achieved. While Wano was waiting for the exam to finish they were approached by one Inasa Urashi. Hey you guys are from UA right? It's amazing that you guys finish so fast. It must be from all my teaching you guys huh? The loud boy stated. Yeah that was like toast cool. I had a total omph moment at that, you gotta give us some tips fam. Said a blonde girl named Kami Atsushimi. All Might wishes he could train us this well. Kasuki boasted. Yeah, the teachers were really put to shame this year weren't they? Kayaka added on earning looks of surprise from the two Shiketsu students. Early then who trained you? Inasa inquired. Izuku did. Todoroki answered with a soft smile as he subtly praised the man who changed him for the better. Inasa noticed the change in Todoroki between the recommendations exam and now. I gotta meet this guy. Where is he? The whirlwind user shouted. You better have a good reason for interrupting my nap. Izuku said with a groan as he sat up. No matter how much pestering he received Izuku refused to teach the kids from Shiketsu. Like why not? Kami asked with a pout. Because we're involved in something that you don't want to be involved in. Training my class to the level that they're at was necessary to ensure that they'd survive. You guys aren't involved and will not be involved because it would be a death sentence if you were. Izuku said which caused the kids to finally relent. The second part of the exam was just as much of a breeze. Rather than sticking together each member of one is spread out to help other classes finish rescuing civilians as quickly and effectively as possible. Once Gangwarka and his villains arrived Izuku, Katsuki, and Shoto all stepped up to the front lines. I have to thank you for that training Izuku. Now I'll stand at least somewhat of a chance. Gangwarka said with a chuckle. It was my pleasure, you were an excellent student Gang. The ranker responded. The battle kicked off with Izuku and Gangwarka clashing fists, while Shoto and Katsuki fought off the other villains. All three UA students were enjoying themselves thoroughly. 
Izuku clashed with Gangwarka at high speeds that no one observing was able to keep track of. Katsuki and Shoto didn't need to use their Riatsu and use their quirks and skill to keep the other mock villains at bay. All in all the exam was going well. Until an Aranker decided to rear its head at the exam. Everyone that was able to sense Riatsu instantly had their guard up in response to the opening of a Garganta. The Ranker that stepped out had short sandy blonde hair and an eye patch. Alongside him were several of the Execrius. Execrius, your orders are to kill as many humans as you can. The blonde Ranker stated. UA Academy first year heroics class. Gangwarka shouted. I grant you permission to engage in combat. Everyone aside from the UA students and faculty were shocked at the Orsonus user's announcement until the students and Eraser had leapt into action. While normally Izuku would deal with the strongest Ranker, he decided to let Gangwarka take him on as somewhat of a test. I am the pro hero Gangwarka. What is your name Ranker? My name is Tesla Lindacruz, I am the Fratchian of the Kyordo Espada. The Ranker announced. He allowed no more small talk as he drew his Xanthakudo and engaged the Orsonus user in combat. Unfortunately for Tesla the odds were stacked against him. The students crushed the Exequius with minimal effort, and Gangwarka was putting up more of a fight than he expected. So he used Sunido to try and eliminate some of the non-combatants. Only to be pinned down by every member of one in addition to Izawa and Gangwarka. Each individual keeping the Ranker pinned had a look in their eyes that promised death. The three non-combatants were understandably freaked the hell out. OMG. Like what the hell are you people? This should totes be impossible for anyone without an enhancer quirk. Kamiyatsu Shimi exclaimed. These guys are completely different from the sports festival. None of us ever could ever hope to stand a chance. Yoshindo breathed out in shock. They look ready to kill him. They're no better than Endeavor. Inasa Urashi thought angrily. In the end Izawa was the one that did the deed of killing the Ranker. As a pro he had the credibility to explain himself, while his students didn't. As they were walking away however Inasa's fury took hold. He used his wind cork to launch him at Izawa as fast as possible. All at once each member of one who used their high speed movement to step in. Izuku had his sword pointing at his throat alongside Kaioka's earphone jacks. Katsuki and Shoto were on his left and right sides respectively, ready to unleash the full force of their quirks, should the Shiketsu student try and take one more step. Momo and Fumikic were at his back with a sword and black hand, ready to put an end to the man that dared to attack their teacher. The rest of the class surrounded him with looks of sheer anger. Care to explain why you're attempting to assault a teacher in pro hero Urashi? Make it quick because I'm in a less than pleasant mood. Izuku said calmly. You bastards are no better than Endeavor. You aren't heroes, you murderers playing at being heroes. The whirlwind user growled. Izuku scoffed at his statement before sheathing his sword and walking away. The rest of one have followed their unofficial leader, leaving an enraged Inasa. You bastards will never be true heroes, not now and not ever. You hear me? The Shiketsu first year roared. It was later revealed that Inasa was the only one who failed to obtain his provisional license. Despite his attempt to assault a pro occurring after the license exam, it was something that could not be overlooked. Well guys that is it for now, make sure to like and subscribe for a cookie and join the discord if you want, and check out my patreon anyway, see you guys later.